everyone, Joshua Hinlin here back with Kirk and Brian, and we are at Brick Fair Virginia 2022, and we're about to start another convention floor tour here at Brick Fair. So you can see on Brian's face how excited he is to be bringing you another, what, three, four, five hour video? <laughs> it might as well be a 24 hour live stream. <laughs> Might as well, but I'm excited to go through the wonderful creations here in Chantilly, Virginia, alongside two gentlemen and John behind the and, camera. And another gentleman. Yeah, and he's another something. Uh, we're starting with Harry Potter, man. Uh, Joshua, did you watch Harry Potter in the time from the last tour in Chicago? What do you think? That's a no. So this is Hogwarts Castle complete with uh, everything, for the most part, from the movies, including the Hogwarts Express, the Quidditch match. We've got Hogsmeade, a little bit of Diagon Alley, perhaps. Um, a wonderful representation of Hogwarts, much bigger than anything you would see in a Lego set. And, uh, man, it's, it's very impressive. All the different scenes from all the movies, very cool. So if this looks familiar to anyone, this is done by Daniel Konstansky, and we interviewed him about kind of just the castle portion last year at a show, but now he's expanded on it greatly and added everything on the other side there. So we'll do an update video and kind of get some more of his uh, in-depth discussion on this build because it is a fantastic display and has a fantastic spot here as you walk in the door. Yeah, we're going to be doing videos on a lot of these creations individually, but then the overall tour video is going to give a, a good glimpse at everything in the bright lights of... Uh, Brick Fair, Virginia. That's, that's right. We're getting some brighter lights turning on now, so that's wonderful. So you'll be able to see the creations well. We can keep moving down this direction as we make sure to check out all the builds. As I always like to mention on these tours, we do our best to show as much as we possibly can. They just walked in with two dozen Domino's pizzas. Let's hurry this oh up, no, boys. Oh, no. You're, I know how tempted you are, Brian. Stay strong. Okay, I'll try. We have this uh, beautiful Chicago sign. This is done by Randall Wilson of uh, Lego Master Season 2, decked out for Brick Fair, Virginia. Anyone who has taken the uh, patented uh, Hanlon tour of downtown Chicago will recognize this sign. So if not, you got to get on it. It's, it's a beautiful centerpiece when you first walk into the Dulles Expo Center that kind of feels like a Walmart. <laughs> Uh, maybe because it was. That's true. Now we're over here at the Hampton Roads LEGO user group. This is Hard Lug. And we've got some nice kind of corner buildings with some Star Wars guys hanging out there. Uh, Kirk, what, which, uh, which Star Wars uh, thing is that from? I don't know. Okay. Not you know, we tried. Someone in the comments will recognize that. Here's the march through the Arden Forest. This is a World War II build, so we're getting the first of what will be many military builds here at Brick Fair, Virginia. Military is one of the very big themes at this show. And that's where you feel most at home, especially uh, right next to all the Harry Potter things here, Hogwarts, what goes better than military and Harry Potter together, you know? Oh, what is, what is this here? It looks like maybe uh, some fantastic... They're using, like, the track as walls along the side. That's pretty spicy. Looks like a bit of a work in progress. We're recording this on Friday night, so public hours are Saturday and Sunday. So people still hard at work on their creations. That's right. That's right. It looks like we've got a very colorful build next to that here, uh, using a lot of the princess-type pieces, maybe some elves stuff thrown in there, all sorts of uh, very colorful stuff here. A magical carnival. It's very cute. <laughs> very cool. I like the little uh, pen with the, uh, those, like, those look like llamas almost. They are llamas, dyed pink, purple, and natural colors too. Whoa. Great work. A uh, very different build next to that. There was a boat race here at the hotel pool earlier that we saw out of our hotel room. I don't know if you guys could see that or not. I couldn't. I was actually working, so unfortunately I missed it. And, and I was asleep. <laughs> okay, well, priorities, you know. <laughs> anyway, that was pretty cool to see in the hotel pool. We see a bit of a city layout here, heavily modified kind of modular buildings. Uh, is that like a Harry Potter building they've got in there? Yep, some Harry Potter buildings. And what you're going to notice here at Brick Fair, Virginia, there's a whole lot of city displays across the board. So we're going to go through these as best as we can. But everybody brought their A game with combining uh, what would be monorail tracks, modulars, modified or otherwise, and making very lively cities all throughout the convention floor, regardless of what section or lug they're a part of. This, uh, this is crazy. So the entire track is covered in words and minifigs on top of this, this like coaster track here. It's the minifig mover. Wow. Pretty swanky. Uh, this m massive Spitfire airplane here, uh, World War II fighter plane. Uh, this thing is incredible. Just the size of this is amazing. And it's got, I believe, Snoopy in there as well. So what a, what a crazy build and a great choice of character. Trying to shoot down the Red Baron. 
This is No Man's Sky. I'm gonna guess that's a video it's, game. It's a video game. That is a video game. Um, I love the the curvatures of the ship that you use from in the game. It is a randomly generated based game, so uh, the creatures and foliage are all totally random, and they did a good representation here of uh, the game. So in a scale from like one to ten of like don't care about versus must play, where does this fall? We'll rate these as we go along. Uh, this is about an a seven point. Five. Okay. It had a very long development cycle, but it's a solid game now. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. We've got the Micro Classic Space Mother Ship, and if you look at the mock card, it's a seriously huge investment in parts. If you've ever heard of Ship Timber, this is when builders build these massive 100 plus stud long ships and post them online, bring them to shows, and this is obviously Classic Space inspi inspired. I love the rotating rings, rings there as well. Yeah, and you're going to see a bunch of classic space here at the show, especially with the 90th anniversary sets making a full force. Now, this, this ship here, a different type of ship, I have not actually looked at yet. This is a Fletcher-class destroyer. This is fantastic. Look at this, and I love the, the, the way they did the water is very unique. So not just the parts dumping of studs, but actually building waves, uh, very parts intensive, obviously, with a lot of plates and bricks there. But then you're able to kind of bury the hole a little bit and make it look much more realistic. Yes, better than having it on just a black tablecloth makes it incredibly interactive, and it sits probably very nicely in that blue base space. I love the, uh, the uniqueness of this. And on the other side, we've got ourselves a giant airport. So Lego has made all sorts of fun planes over the years. Uh, you can see the smaller kind of like acrobatic planes and then the larger cargo and people movers. If you look closely, you can see inside the airport in of itself, it's the Hanlons getting their flight canceled back home. They're in there. They're in there. No, don't bring back those memories. <laughs> it happens to most of us nowadays. <laughs> oh, it is, it is a struggle, isn't it? I love... The big runway here as well, using these large uh, tile pieces. And then right next to the airport is a beach, and you've got your kayakers and all sorts of fun beach activities and the little, like, uh, tower there. Yep, they're uh, watching over all the different planes that are inbound and making sure no sharks eat anything either. A little bit more of the airport here, and then we've got a large kind of, like, medical ship. And then the USS Chesapeake and the HMS Birch. So we've got a uh, large tall ship, kind of sailing ships on display here as well. I love the sails, uh, kind of worn they look, and the coloring, especially on the, the ship on the left here, I think is really great. So that finishes out uh, Hard Luck Force as the Hampton Roads LEGO user group, and we'll make our way over to these tables here. And here we start to see uh, the first of many kind of Bionicle type builds that we'll see here at the show. No. This is Gundam. Oh, okay. My bad. I, I lump it all together. No, they are Gundam. But I do want to point out this, uh, what, whatever's happening over here, um, we seem to have to kind of bedazzled the builds a little bit. You need a bit more bedazzling in life, Joshua. You should take one of the bows and just instead of the Beyond the Brick logo, it's the bow. Just to, you know keep it spicy yeah 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 i think just to up the energy and really bring in more yes. viewers yes exactly just like these wonderful gundam builds do uh you have like technic based gundam creations uh along with system combining into a nice combination at all different scales as well just like actual gundam is too kirk have you ever attempted to build anything like this i actually i built a gundam myself maybe about a month or two ago it was actually the rx 78-2 which is right there so oh, okay. it was a it was a pretty fun build uh it's a bit smaller in scale, but they vary in sizes and stuff. Maybe one day I'll build one of the bigger ones, but they're, it's a pretty interesting hobby. It looks like it'd be a struggle getting the, the structural integrity right along with all of the little details. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Here we see some nice uh, color-coded builds. I like this one because it kind of has the Beyond the Brick colors to it. So that stands out. This this dude here is super cool. Caused uh, Copri. I like that one. This one is very poseable. Shout out to a little Jack Stone there as well. Everybody's getting stoned at Brick Fair, Virginia this year with all the little Jack Stones everywhere. This Iron Maiden inspired build is kind of how I feel on the inside. You know, very, very colorful, very vibrant all the way down, but then just a gray mass for my head. Like, you know, all little, all little flowery bits and sneakers and... It didn't take us long to get to this point in the tour, did it? No, no, not at all. Not enough caffeine for it. But it's a really intricate build, and it's supported by a decked-out flower-coated tower in the back, so that's a great way to hide the support system so it doesn't all topple over. 
Very, very nice build there. We've got ready to launch, so kind of getting into the uh, mech there. Some more Gundam and mech type builds. Ooh, this diorama is fantastic here. See a big battle having taken place, like knocked over pillar pillars, and just the posing is fantastic. What is this thing here? It looks like the dragon head from uh, one of the Legoland things, so that's pretty cool. But it's like a mech, but they basically have it with the dragon head. I think that's cool. That's a nice concept of like mashing those two things together. Not, so, not something you typically see at Legoland. Here is a big medieval battle, tons of minifigures. These are very cool here. So now we're heading into the TikTok section. Oh, oh boy. The Brick Talk? You just... That's a great name. All well, right. I think that's the, I think they did a panel called that. Did that's they, what Andreas said. Did they really? Oh, I missed it. I was asleep. <laughs> but this is where all uh, TikTok content creators are, including uh, Joe here, who has super scaled up uh, Lego holdables, which are always cool to see. I think these are actually acetone together so they don't fall apart. I think he's a Legoland model builder, right? Yes, he is. Yep, yep. These, I love, so this piece on the left, the saw piece, I always loved growing up. So growing up with the, uh, like, Rock Raiders theme, that piece was, like, ever-present in the sets there. So I love that. And, of course, yeah, the walkie-talkie tools are fantastic. Next to that is uh, Ethan the Artisan. Uh, so we actually have a video uh, up on the channel from Brick Rodeo with him and a lot of these builds that are on display here. Super talented builder. I think my favorite is the Cyberpunk Portal Escape. Every, uh, the longer you look at that, more and more details you see there. So really great stuff. And I think, like you said, I think are all, all of these builders are on TikTok. Yes, like Epic Bricks. And you can see a combination of all the different creators here with their backdrops. So now I'm inspired to make one for my own. Everybody else should be because we all participate in a live stream or otherwise. It's really cool to see everybody come together for that. What, what kind of content can they find from you on TikTok? Uh, food reviews. Okay. Like I, I did that when I went to Amsterdam. Yeah. They put a lot of mayo on everything. So a lot of oh mayo. I thought you said mayo. No mayo, oh, oh, okay. mayo on things. So I okay. review food. So my TikTok is nowhere near as complex and elaborate as what all these people do, including like this Wandavision mock, which is incredible. Oh, I like that. You have have you seen the show? I have seen Wandavision. It was fantastic. Right, so now this is the pop culture one. You understand? <laughs> yes, yes. Enough people kept nagging me about it that I finally watched it. Nice. And yeah, the Avengers Tower is great too. We'll see another amazing Avengers Tower later on in the middle of a city that's, that's really incredible as well. Yes, and there's like a swag Yoda hiding out in the background. He's peeping. <laughs> He's peeping back there, watching over us. I'm going to have to take that home for my collection. Uh, Dom, be on the lookout, man. I love this build here. So this is a sea battle taking place at the Colosseum. So one of the famous things that happened in ancient Rome at the Colosseum was they would flood the middle section and actually have naval battles take place in the middle of the stadium. And it's just insane to think about that. Like if you visit the Colosseum to think of naval battles happening there, but they were able to do it. So those Romans, they were up to some crazy stuff. I actually never knew that. Yeah. That's awesome. Very, very cool. I think there have been talks about trying to... Uh, like work on the Coliseum so they could recreate that today, but I don't know if that's going to go anywhere. That'd be incredible. <laughs> Here we see some uh, older historical military stuff. So you've got the uh, American Revolutionary War, then some early uh, like Napoleonic era battles here with the British and French. And then on the over here, you've got uh, Hannibal crossing the Alps. And then I love this build incorporating the, the big Egyptian headpiece there uh, from... 1348 there. Fantastic. That kind of forced perspective of the sun back there is really, really great. Next to that, we see this massive, massive model of the HMS Victory. We had a video on this build uh, from this show last year, so you can check that out if you haven't seen it. But this this build, I mean, you just look at the size of this thing. You can see the builder standing behind there for scale. So excellent work. Oh, it's a, it's a different one. Okay. Okay, nice. Well, we'll have to take a closer look at it then. We see some work in progress happening still here. So you can see the patented uh, use your rainbow bricks inside the build because people won't see them technique. So that's really great if you're uh, work working on large scale builds. What is, what is this build depicting? Uh, Caucasus. Okay. So you see like a uh, World War II era build here. Fantastic work. Got some uh, American Civil War layouts here as well. So kind of all, all periods represented, just for, you know, cohesion. <laughs> for the sake of cohesion, <laughs> yes, there are. We'll make our way back this way, uh, maybe start on this, this layout here in the middle. This is the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area, WAMA 
LTC is, it's called LEGO Train Club. So we're going to see a lot more trains and a lot more buildings here. Trains and buildings, yes, skyscrapers, which are never easy to transport, but always look beautiful on display, including ones that are work in progress. we got a hotel from the Sheridan, and then working down towards some smaller scale ones. One has like a helicopter landing pad on the very top. There's a castle. Actually, it's Bruce Wayne's mansion. That's pretty swanky. That is very detailed, yes. That is, that is very nice there. Look at the big W in the pond. I love that. Very colorful buildings here. Uh, the Coke Zero one is very nice. That's great. Love seeing all the text in the walls and whatnot. Very cool. This building is really unique with kind of the different layers build up and then the big black section there. That looks like it's based on a real building in Springfield, Virginia. So very nice. Another Avengers Tower. That's a popular build this year, I think. Yeah, we're going to see a lot more of those as the show goes on. Uh, we also have a carnival in the middle along with a, like a haunted castle, some of the uh, fairground sets that have released in the past couple years, and plenty of minifigures to make them look like they're having a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. When the public comes through here tomorrow, they'll have a lot of fun checking all of that out. Here you see some of the, the original Lego coaster and then the new big like uh, loop coaster all running hopefully pretty well, kind of incorporated with the Ninjago City there. Yes, and Kirk reviewed that giant new roller coaster. Right. Kirk, would, would you say people should check this out? I would definitely say for them to check it out. It's got a cool concept going on with it. I definitely think it's got a bit of an upgrade going on since the original roller coaster that they released, so it's worth a shot. Perfect, perfect. And we round the corner to a nice beach scene here. I love that rounded uh, flamingo building in the back there. That That is fantastic. And just the colors of it and just the, getting that rounded look with Lego is not easy, so that looks fantastic. The big Ferris wheel. Uh, you've got a nice, cool little arcade. I like the use of those, uh, the, the angled pieces for the lettering. Yep, that makes it look especially cool. I love the logo, palm tree mm -hmm. on the very back building there, made out of the purple fin pieces, mm -hmm. typically seen on Ninjago Dragons. Very cool. In, oh, nice, like, Miami vibes a little bit from this whole section. You see a lot of modular buildings, a very nice fire station out there. Some builders still hard at work here, getting everything ready. Uh, shout out to IHOP and Chick-fil-A stuck in there. Two meccas next to each other. I would pick Chick-fil-A over IHOP any day, but that's just me. I think everyone on earth would agree with you. <laughs> no Waffle House in this display, though. <laughs> oh, man. That's when it starts getting controversial. And then we come over here to, uh, I think, a large uh, cemetery build. And so this is kind of your big like mausoleums and a lot of the larger tombstones and stuff that you see, especially in uh, like a lot of European cemeteries. Right, exactly. And the level of detail across multiple heights, it's not just a flat cemetery either, it makes it a lot more in-depth and especially the autumn leaf colors make it stand out a bit more when you're looking at it. It's not just all gray. Mm -hmm. I very much like that. Oh, this is great. Very New Orleans vibes here is really, really fantastic. So you got the gumbo shop, uh, Book Emporium. This man's and riding a gator, of course he is. <laughs> That's how most people get around. That's the main mode of transportation in New Orleans. Uh, hey, I'm down with it. <laughs> We've got uh, some classic white bricks there in that barn. A, a little bit aged up, but you know, what's really grabbing my attention here is this wedding that's happening between two cats. There's a hedgehog in the, in the stands. They're having a nice old, nice old animal wedding over here. And the frogs. The frogs that were used in the bonsai tree, they're making an appearance there too. It's, it's so cute. And this is kind of like a sideshow happening. Yes, having a singing competition with the penguins in, in line, yeah. Oh, tire swing is super cool there, for hanging down from the big tree. That works really well. At the dog park, beautiful little field of sunflowers. And, and fun fact, they're all like facing the same way as sunflowers do. They're facing toward wherever the sun is pointing. Oh, I like it. More fun facts to come, I hope. See, I don't know just about fast food. I know stuff. <laughs> here is a church based on a church in Alexandria, Virginia, Christ Church here. So you can even see some of the uh, kind of colonial or that's like Civil War era figures. You got some like colonial era figures on the other side. Nice little bar and an ice cream shop, some very historic looking areas. I feel like that's the type of stuff you would see in Boston, in my mind. Yes, and that's what I saw in Amsterdam as well. Okay, there you go. I've been very cultured since the last tour video, Joshua. <laughs> you really expanded your mind. 
Yeah, there you go. Based on Old Town Alexandria. Based on Old Time Alexandria, which is where? Like 30 minutes. Up there. 30 minutes from Chantilly, Virginia. So the people that are local are really embracing the culture and bringing it to Brick Fair, Virginia. They are. I think he was upset that I thought it said uh, that I thought it was in Boston. I mean, I mean, I don't blame you. <laughs> I mean, I, I would have thought it was Boston. <laughs> Here, this this is we've got now, now this sum, is sum, summoning something here. This is from Salem, Massachusetts, right here. The, the you know the things popping out, coming to grab you to another universe. That's that's that. Apparently, there's a tesseract. Involved. There's a tesseract involved, <laughs> and some sort of sacrifice with the. Uh, that's it's a attendant yeah will right. Be for a few days. Exactly. She the flight attendant's gonna be fine. She'll be in the upside down or something, taken care of. Kirk, Kirk, which which Marvel movie is this from? I missed this one. Uh, I. Don't think this is from any Marvel movie, <laughs> but the Tesseract is a you know a Marvel item. Loki does use that, so maybe he gave it to them. He has great interiors, and Lego copied his toilets. Lot, lots of great interiors in there as well. Very cool. That's, that's pretty detailed. I like that a lot, especially the pool room area. That area right there, that looks great. Very nice. Thank you guys. Keep up the good work. And we see a little more ice cream shop, uh, kind of a train station. Then we come around to the trains themselves. Uh, here you can see uh, Jason Wolfson's um, dinosaur-themed station. So we cut, we featured last year his whole creation uh, uh, that was dinosaur-themed from that. So that was really cool. And you've got based on uh, I'm pretty sure it's based on uh, Jim Henson's dinosaur train, the show on PBS Kids. I think the train turned out pretty accurate to how it looks in the show. So I like that a lot. Uh, you are correct. Yeah, we have, I think, a whole video with him last year. For, he had a much larger display with all that. Yeah, that looks awesome. I like that a lot, especially the station area. Like, there's a lot of detail with, like, the curves and stuff on the railing. I like that a lot. So that completes uh, looking at the, taking a look at this building here real quick. Uh, this, is the, this is just a data center. And that completes, I think, the WAMA LTC layout for us here. And we will continue on this direction then. Uh, we, we can point out as we go by here, so this is the vendors to the left, so this whole area over here is just vendors, so there's all sorts of uh, fun things that you can buy here at the show, as always. Here's the uh, Battle of Castellon from 1453. This is the decisive French victory that marked the end of the Hundred Years' War, as the mock card says here, so uh, Hundred Years' War, very famous for uh, Joan of Arc and very, many famous f battles between the French and the British. But this was kind of the decisive battle of the war. You see these minifigures laid out really nicely with custom brick-built horses. You don't see custom brick-built horses very often. No, you definitely don't. And they're probably more cost-effective than some of the horses available today. And it adds a unique flair to your otherwise uh, very intricate display. I also want to point out a fun historical detail here. So you start to see, towards the end of the Hundred Years' War, artillery starting to make an appearance on the battlefield and transitioning away from older forms of kind of large battlefield weapons into gunpowder weapons and I think it's very interesting to see how this is all laid out. So great work to the builders there. And continuing with a bit more uh, historical accuracy here, we're seeing um, not only this wonderful temple that's been here in previous years, but then the big fight, which is the dinosaur cavemen versus the mummies. Uh, this is what I personally resonate with as a history buff in some way, shape, and form. Um, I'm pretty sure I saw this on a ride at Universal and it's great. Look for your, your thesis coming on this battle soon. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and you've got the Temple of uh, Anubis and Maat, and you can see all of their kind of characters represented there, as well as having some fun. You know, here's a little, little pie to the face. So uh, here you can see a little bit of gruesome work being prepared to mummify him there. They're sucking the stud out the top of his head. That guy's definitely not having a good day. He's definitely not having a good day. But I do like how they have this whole thing like sloped and you have the tiling and everything, just creating that smooth look, keeping the studs as minimal as possible. So I think they did a good job. Next to that is a fight at the Adventurers Camp, which is always cool to see the Adventurers theme represented anywhere. Uh, I love to see that. When we were at Legoland Dubai earlier this year, they had a whole Adventures themed experience you could have and then get an exclusive kit at the end. It was very cool. If people haven't seen that video on the channel, definitely check that out. The marketplace, you got your classic Sphinx. You can't have Egypt without the Sphinx. And then a whole bunch of smaller rooms working your way through here. The Toxic Crusher Labyrinth, Big Scorpion, Jack Stone managing the lava pit. Here's a uh, Stargate, a little, some more lava. Got a, like TARDIS, references to everything. 
I don't even know what's happening in this scene with a bunch of green, oh, is that like a D&D uh, &D type of idea? A bunch of adventures with green weapons or something? It could be, I'm not really for certain. I do like how they've used that Lego Chima clock though, and used that as like a centerpiece of the build and having like the brick build uh, scale in his hand. So I thought that was cool. Shout out to this, the extremely micro Roman Coliseum here, <laughs> using one gold stud with the hole in the middle. So you've, you've obviously still got the, the, the center hollowed out, but wow, that is uh, some next level builds there. And some more Egyptian mummy builds. You got the mummy museum. And then, of course, the architects of the pyramids here planning things out, the aliens. And Johnny Thunder, Tomb of Ramses VIII. Hadrian's Wall, so the iconic uh, Roman defensive fortification in England. Uh, I have not had a chance to visit there myself yet. Definitely something I would like to see someday. This is from Gary Brooks, who we featured many times on the channel. Legendary historical military builder here at Brick Fair. Excellent work. And I love the commentary on current world events. Um, we're seeing President Joe Biden addressing the reporters as he... Uh, you know, distinguishes the rumors about the lizard people actually running the, the United States. He's currently turning into a lizard. And if you look underneath, uh, you can see the lizard people just taking full throttle on uh, the United States government. And this is this deeply resonates with me as a firm believer in the lizard people uh, running the economy. That's what we blame the inflation on people. Oh, yeah, I knew there was something that we had. Yeah, gas prices as well. Yeah, it's it's gas prices. It's it's the that supply shortage. No, it's just the lizard people wanting to get more liquid lizard goo for themselves. Yeah, you're able to see through them. Oh, that's what I like about you, Brian. Just like the moon landing, it's all hoax. Mm -hmm. all this is uh, Leave Me Alone uh, from Michael Jackson's uh, short film. So I love the colors on this. I've never seen the source material for this, but it's a great looking build. Here's a bunch of builds by uh, Emily and Liam Norris, I believe it is. And they're going to, uh, or Liam is going to be on uh, Lego Masters Season 3. Oh. So this is kind of Lego Masters row over toward this way. You're seeing lots from Avatar The Last Airbender, uh, Spider-Man uh, Into the Spider-Verse, all different Disney princesses, some video game representation, Star Wars, all the things here done by Liam. Wonderful work. That's very, very nice. And then the whole, this whole rest of the row here, I believe, is all uh, Nick's builds, right? Brick and Nick to show off. Yes, yes, Brick and I mean, he just comes to flex on all of us, really, at the he, end of the day. He, he really does. And although he is a friend of mine, also the fact that he has a Super Mario Bros-themed build on the actual play system of LEGO Super Mario makes this one of my favorite creations of the entire show. It is a fully playable course. You can get 100 coins or really? more using Mario or Luigi. Keep score. There's actually an underground area as Ooh. well. Actually, John, go back. I'll show you. The, I'll show you. We've got to move. We've got to come back and make a video with you playing through his course. There it is. Look at that. What? Oh, there's more secrets. We'll save it oh, for another yes, video. Yes. We'll come back and do a, a whole video with you demonstrating it. Yes, sir. We won't even tell Nick. We'll just have you play through it. That's fine. We don't got to tell him. <laughs> uh, what is what is this controller here? So it's like when you're breaking open a controller and all of the majesty that video games has to offer. You have a racing game, an RPG, and then a platformer, and it actually has an actual controller alongside the Lego one, which is really cool. What kind of controller is that? It's just a third-party PlayStation oh, okay. 2. I wasn't sure if they were, yeah, which system. No, because you don't want to tear apart an actual good controller. Oh, okay. Just, yeah. I see. That makes sense. You've got the uh, Tesla truck. You got stoned. <laughs> he got stoned again. You can see some tensegrity in the back there. I, I love this Luigi. Yes. and King Boo combination. The expressiveness on Luigi and the way that he got the curve of King Boo. He actually tried harder than Lego did. He got the curves instead of Lego who made the boxy one. Oh. He actually put the effort in. It's almost like he should be on a reality TV show himself, you know? Yes, yes. About, not about building Lego, but some kind of reality show. Domino Masters Season 1. Tune in on Fox. Here you can see his PS5 and his Xbox Series X with those interior designs. So much great. I, it's weird because I uh, so, saw these builds online for so long, but this is the first time I've seen Nick's builds in person in several years. And so I feel like these I've seen these for so long, but it's great to finally see them in person. Yeah, and especially the Lego patent, which is something he's been really pushing on Lego Ideas. A lot of great comments from A-Falls here about just how awesome this is and the 3D aspect to the whole thing, too, makes it like an art piece that you would see out of an actual Lego set. So make sure you go vote for those on Lego Ideas, along with everything else he has here at the show. 
And that's actually the end of Nick's. And I think it's uh, Liz's Builds, who's also going to be on season three of Lego Masters, has this great kind of waterfall scene uh, with the construction worker just chilling in the middle there. Shout out to uh, little Boston. Yep, she's a fellow Bostonian, so I love that. She's great. She's already got towards the top of your, your fan favorite. I'm rooting for her instead of Nick or anyone else. Doesn't matter. Got uh, I mean, Nick's Canadian, so it's really not much of a competition. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Here you see the Punisher logo, and then are these 3D printed tacos? Yes, they are, and they're uh, you know in different scales. It's very, it's a very cool concept. And I think they actually have like blasters, like the stud shooters um, from Lego, 3D printed as well. So they're pretty talented. That is very unique. I like it. We got a Star Wars party train, and then the Lego Masters logo here as well, being overrun by dinosaurs and Jurassic Park. We've got this great uh, painting, Kermit and the Tadpoles here. <laughs> and then we've got a really fantastic kind of flat iron looking building that's all like superhero themed with some Star Wars builds next to it. See some, I guess apparently part of a much larger city there. We've got a Brick Nerd themed bottle of hand sanitizer. That's very important. Some smaller micro builds there. I love the brick built QR code. I might I might have to snag that idea for a future Bricks O'Brien booth. That's a good idea. Please do, please do. When we see your giant, giant banners up, we want to see that. Yes, sir. That mosaic is really nice too. Yes. Different types of colors making a, a heart with uh, rays coming out of it. Nice. Very reminiscent of the types of things you would see in like Pompeii or ancient Roman sites with that style. I like that a lot. And you see some great brick built lettering. You see the fireworks here. Uh, let's see what what is what is this uh, what is this? Uh, this is the Battle of Wakanda from Avengers: Infinity War. Now, a couple of years ago, when I first displayed at Brick Fair Virginia, I actually did something similar, but focused on the scene that took place in the forest. This one goes beyond the forest and goes to the open plains of Wakanda, where you see all the Outriders coming in. After the forest field goes down, the Avengers are fighting them, and it's, it captures pretty much all the action sequences that we see throughout that battle of Wakanda. So. I think that the builder did a pretty solid job of like just capturing every moment that like really matters in that movie. So look at the look at the head on this guy. That was not in the movie, but it's definitely a cool twist on things having Yoda's head on uh, Thanos instead. So and then next to that is a nice little what is this like some Roman Empire possibly build? Uh, I don't know if this is what era exactly this is supposed to be, but you've got some like hidden crystals down here. Looks like the uh, Empire sending out some soldiers to question this guy living on the land here. I like that. Very, very mysterious. Clever girl with the little T-Rex arms there is great. Nice little mosaics. Uh, these are, I'm not sure how you describe this, but there's always Long something mind-blowing. Galador. <laughs> Long live Galador. We just have, you know, the whole representation of that theme and just everything that it stood for. You know, like we have this guy with the cowboy hat. I forget, I think that's Euripides' uh, head right there. I do like this, you know, the whole theming that they kind of wanted to put a twist on it and kind of show some love for it. Cause you know, it's, it's got a bit of a history, but it's a great, it's a great build. They had, they had uh, the Nick Bluetooth actor a few years ago here at the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, a, that was a cool moment to have that here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I like this a lot. I like so it. Brick Fair has been a long time Galador supporter. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> And we'll, we'll head back towards this section now, so we'll see some more uh, Bionicle stuff. Actually, I think we're starting quite a few um, Bionicle-type builds in here as well. So we will just launch on in with the Von Nebula, which is the mastermind here. So big, beautiful purple wings. Oh, it looks like some of this might light. Oh, we got some lights on. Very, very nice. Thank you. Added lights as well. That looks fantastic. I love the big horns on that green character. It's got like a big bow and arrow. Very frightening. Here is uh, Sierra and the Claptrap. I think that's uh, Borderlands inspired. Uh, one of, if not my favorite all time uh, video game series there. So that's super cool. Uh, you don't see a lot of border games in Borderlands inspired uh, builds these days, but I absolutely love that there. So very good work. You got Resident Evil. And then this uh, Riot Dog. This big, like, uh, centipede-looking thing. Got that overlord here, this black guy. And Bruce Flame. Got great red and yellow there. 
I like the giant shield on that one. And as we keep moving down the line, you see some more characters. And some more lights incorporated there. And here is a robot chicken. And that's, uh, you see a couple, shout out to Brick World, a couple of Brick World uh, mock cards here. So those are a little out of place. What stands out to you here, Brian? We could just stop with this whole section. I, everything's right here. But this Rocco Rama is wonderful from Rocco's Modern Life. Love that. Very unique using it. Is that like a cloth piece there as well? I love the, uh, this is like a pirate samurai in the back. That's really sweet. There's a performer. Got a nice singing competition. Oh, this is really cool using that silver piece. And that's, uh, do you know what that is, Joshua? No. Yeah, you do. You play Breath of the Wild. Oh. It's a Lionel. Oh, it's a Lionel. I feel like I didn't, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see the back legs there first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it is a Lionel. That's a very cool one. I love this blue dragon as well. That's awesome. Reminds me of something from like How to Train Your Dragon. Kind of has that sort of a theming. It's a specific dragon in the movie. I can't remember the name of it, but it reminds me a lot of that. And we see Son of Makuta here. This guy's super cool with the purple and the gold. Very stoic looking uh, green guardian. Ooh, this Lord Overdeath is fantastic. Look at the weapons on that guy. Uh, I like the, uh, the big canisters on this guy's shoulders, kind of feeding down to his arm rockets. And there are so many impressive, like, Bionicle-type builds on display here. And there's just so many, like, different parts usages and everything. Looks fantastic all along here. This one almost looks like it's glow-in-the-dark. Oh, I think we've seen this one in the past, but you got to give a shout-out to the red and yellow Wii, Wii Remote creation. That's a wonderful one. There's a, a Great White Shark up there. You're seeing Mecha Sonic. And this uh, come up. Uh, Kamamoto we've seen before at a bunch of other conventions uh, Keeping the Balance is another great one Miara the Metalworks which is like a panther looking creation uh, Zoids making a guest appearance here lots of wonderful creations whoa, whoa what is that I don't even know what's happening there uh, so this is a lanky monkey so his arms are just kind of lanky it's all over the place but that does use the spider monkey mold from I believe it was the Ben 10 sets that they did very different theme, to say the least, but I, I do think this was a creative use of that specific part and just kind of combining that. I think that's actually using some Galador again, some more Galador representation. Gotta love it. Shout out to the uh, Ben 10 fans out there. I think there were three or four of them, so it really kept the theme going for quite a while. And then we've got this guy kind of standing over the lava there is really cool. I like this big, tall, yellow, yellow guy. It looks like a nice hat on top. Oh, this one with the, the green cloth pieces is very, very impressive. So many great parts usages in that one. Here's some kind of a creature with a little turret. This two-headed beast is very scary. Incredibly scary, especially in the black and blue. I love this uh, cert, which is like a cat mask. That's very cool. Love, love seeing that. We just had a massive drop of something over by the Star Wars table, and there's a lot of people gasping and not very happy. That's over by David Hall. We're going to take a look at that in a little while. That looks like, oh, the table collapsed. That's why. Anyways, I'm sorry, John. We're, I'm not focused, but like we just had Tragedy Strike. So we'll take a look at that in a little bit. That's, that's we'll, a, we'll bring you live to the scene. Yeah, we will. We'll, we'll bring you live <laughs> in a little while here. Um, Bionicle, it just, it just keeps going, man. It's, it, we always say that if, there, if there's two themes that you're interested in, if it's military or bionicle, then Brick Fair is the show for you. You'll see some of those builds at other shows, but here at Brick Fair, you really see just an incredible array of all of these and so many talented builders that come out here. Here, this guy's all caught up in the tentacles there. Another great use of those like flat disc pieces on that blue guy. It's a super cool deep sea angler fish. I love that. And this, uh, this commando yellow guy there is very nice as well. You can see Builder's still hard at work here. Now we should uh, 
we should, uh, I guess, maybe finish out this section, and then we'll make our way back around. So we'll, we'll, we'll hit everything eventually, right? Maybe not. It depends on how tired we get. Yeah, exactly. We need another caffeine boost and some water. Can you, can, In lieu of caffeine. Can you name all these Pokemon, Joshua? Oh, there's a dinosaur. That's a turtle. <laughs> Pikachu, Bulbasaur, Squirtle, and Charmander. Look at that. I mean, you could. it's uh, too easy for you. I didn't go to grad school or school in general, but I know the Pokemon names. Hey, you know, everybody's got to have a talent in life. That's true. Uh, I love these mosaics, and not only because of the different colors, but the different depths as you get closer. Normally with these mosaics, actually all the ones that are done here by Dana, you look from afar to get the idea of what they are, but the, fr the closer you get to these, the, the more detail you get to see, which is unique for mosaics. So I appreciate that approach to what otherwise would have been a fairly monotonous process. I absolutely love this coming home mosaic here with like the pirate seeing the castle in the distance. It's such a like whimsical feeling build, which you wouldn't normally say about a pirate ship, but I think it's fantastic. And the colors here are all amazing, the geometry of it all. And then you have a laundry room. <laughs> I love that. Using the hanging the shirts up there. Here is cool Lego mosaic. You've got the classic wooden duck. Uh, Space Invaders, and this is just like kind of a family mosaic as well. Oh, this this mosaic here, I think, was it at Brick World or was some show we were at recently where everyone was trying to see this? Yeah, and this one was a little bit hard to see, but I guess there's clearer instructions this time. So it's not going to convey on video, but it's cool that it's here, that people can look at. We've got the Mandalorian, we've got Grogu. I like that. So th we saw this style, I think it was with the Pokemon down there, where you have the, the round one-by-one -one tiles, but then some of it is kind of lifted out for a 3D effect. Yep, exactly. And that carries over to a couple of these over here, having some greater details overall. Getting into Joseph Zawada's creations, always got to shout him out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I always love seeing his work. He contributed to an awesome collaborative, pirate collaborative we'll see later on as well. Another Joseph, different builder, did Starry Night here as well. And then, of course, Spider-Man. Oh, we've got, we, this might be the first Halloween-themed build we've seen. Wow, it took long enough. I love this jack-o'-lantern, and it looks very glowy in a good way. Uh, at Brickworld, there ended up being a ton of them. Yeah, you got to see more of that overall everywhere, man. It's a good time to mention if that people haven't checked out our Brickworld tour, they should do that as well. Because this isn't enough content for one person. No, all the content, more content. If you want more LEGO, Beyond the Brick is the place to be, including these tour videos, man. Now, this build is very interesting. I have not looked at this yet. This is the Art of War mock monologue. The 1,300-piece mock is a replica of the 31-player real-time strategy game called Supremacy 1914. Wow, very nice. This is something I need to spend a little more time exploring. I like that a lot. We got dad jokes told here. Just kind of putting that out there for the public to know. See Michael Jordan, Captain Jack Sparrow, Mando, Kiss album cover. Joshua. You feel like getting bouncy? Always. Well, we could take a... <laughs> take a when I think Lego convention, man, I think bouncy house. I mean, you got to have something for the people to do. You got to have something. Lego's not enough, man. No. Yeah, fun fact, I think they uh, they didn't have this last year, and then uh, back by popular demand. <laughs> Got to have a place to bounce, I guess. This we, I know, I know we've seen before, because I remember being just as puzzled by it then as I am right now and what exactly this is. Uh, it's a scene from Harry Potter where there's all sorts of memories that you got to search through. Okay. Very nice, very nice. Looks like some more Harry Potter next to that. Uh, then we get into some custom minifigures here. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of Adam Sandler's last-minute ha Halloween costume ideas. It's a very, very artistic build. And McGruber there, I think it's based on the old SNL sketch. Uh, CTX Rover. Oh, here's, here's some more something you might recognize. That's some Pokemon there and having a Pokemon battle. There's the likes of Bulbasaur, Grimer, Pikachu... Uh, Squirtle, Poliwhirl, Charmander, all sorts of good stuff here in like a mini scale. I like this style of build for Pokemon. It's not just the characters, but it's actually like a field and there's more of a scene here. Exactly. That's great. 
you see some Godzilla, and we're getting into a whole bunch of, I think, Transformers here, which are fantastic. Transf Lego Transformers just blow my mind that you were able to make that out of Lego bricks. It really is incredible. And some, what, some Kingdom Hearts stuff here, some more video game type builds. There's Moon Knight over here. Oh, a couple yes. scenes from Moon Knight. Yes. Moon Knight. I've seen part of it. I need to finish watching the whole show. Yes. Gets very, very good. Gets very gory very quickly. I love oh, it. oh boy. Oh boy. Having been to Egypt, though, I really found I thought it was an interesting idea. There's the Nutcracker Ballet. Got some Mystery Machine action. And some Captain America. I have... No idea what this is a haunted mansion build, it looks like. Uh, yep, Disneyland haunted mansion. Oh, yeah, and on the inside, you could, you could, well, it's probably going to be lit up, but you can see some of the details. We've got, uh, there's Super Mario. That's from, no, that's from Super Smash Bros., where Sephiroth is killing Mario, or just about to kill Mario, but doesn't. So that's, that's a cool reference. This is traumatic for you to see. It, it really was. It really, really was. Star Wars stuff. Uh, oh, this is from The Shining. This is fantastic. Nice. The detail of the Overlook Hotel, like the interior, I love this a lot. And you can see, uh, the, I forgot his name. It might be, this is on the first movie, so it might be just Danny Torrance or not Danny Torrance. Is it Danny Torrance? I think so. Unless it's the first movie, then it's his father. What, what catches my eye here is the fantastic uh, like cheese slope mosaic type work yeah. for the rugs and then above the, the fireplace work of, like the fireplace like this is a really detailed model fantastic work guys thank you and here is the battle for white run from i believe skyrim it says that looks like it's from the skyrim video game looking great there here's a little little tiny section of a uh, crate a little destiny 2 action Here's a uh, stormtrooper travels. Here we've got uh, some tennis courts, but that could easily be turned into some pickleball courts with a little work, Brian. Definitely could. All these things from Maniac for Bricks are on full display. Uh, scenes from Breakfast Club. There's a Bart Simpson sculpture, Big Bird, and some adventure stuff too. Very, very nice. See some kind of micro ship work there some more micro minifig or just uh, custom minifigs nice little vignettes of everyday life uh, oh battleship here I like that using Lego to recreate battleship a couple of iconic products there represented that finishes out that so that's part of pop culture and I think this uh, this is more pop culture over here as well as we go by the ever-present uh, wiped out uh, bounce House. If you feel like bouncing, Brick Fair Virginia is the place to be. Kirk, how long have you spent in there? I have not gone in there yet. I don't think I will. What? I think it'd be good for you. It's, it's not. It's not sanitary. You don't, you don't think so? Not. Not in this time. No. <laughs> not in these times that we live in today. Uh, here's some more Transformers. So Transformers is something we've seen a lot of here at uh, Brick Fair. Very impressive stuff. See some more classic uh, cars here. Anything stand out to you, Kirk? Uh, I definitely like the sound wave that we have here from Transformers. Like that, I think that the detail and capturing that sort of action, sort of pose and stance, I think that's a cool model. Um, then the police car back there actually looks pretty cool. Nice. I like that a lot too. We get into some more Harry Potter here, Brian. What, what, what do we have here? It's another great Hogwarts display using a lot of the elements from the sets themselves to make a more intricate Hogwarts with the, the Great Hall. You have the Clock Tower and then all the way down to Hagrid's Hut with the beautiful display combining, like I said, those set elements really nicely. Do you think there's such a thing as too many Hogwarts castle builds? Yeah, no. There's not. <laughs> Lots of room for more uh, Hogwarts, but then plenty more room for Batman, especially this version of the Batcave from the Robert Pattinson movie. Very, very nice. We haven't seen a lot of builds based on the, the newest Batman movie. No, we have not, but it's still really cool to see the newer Batman be represented here along with uh, the Riddler and everything else that might come out of the franchise soon. Great work. 
and we'll keep going down here. So this is Noah Hennings, featured his work on Beyond the Brick many times in the past. He does these fantastic smaller Star Wars builds here, so really love to see that as well. He creates these nice kind of bases for them, so it's a, it's a very nice scene. Yeah, exactly. I love that. I love that Joseph Zawada uh, stole, I mean, took took borrow from uh, Brick and Nick's Nintendo Switch design. He and Nick always have a lot of beef. They, they are fighting as right now we speak. Iron Man, big hall of armor from uh, Dominic here. So he goes by Psycho Brick uh, 43 on Instagram and stuff, but he's a very talented builder. He's been bringing this to the show for, I think this is the third year that it's been here or so, or at least my third time seeing it. It's actually going to be the last time it's here at this convention, so he's going to be working on some other stuff in the future. Um, he also has a scene from Avengers Endgame with three of the main Avengers sort of fighting Thanos and then all these other Transformers that he likes to work on as well. So just fantastic work all the way around here. And then we get into some of Nathaniel Stoner's work, and you see uh, Mandalorian-type inspired stuff. Uh, you've got some, some more Star Wars scenes there. Actually, a number of different Star Wars scenes kind of sprinkled throughout here, but great detail. And a lot of this stuff is actually new. He was explaining it to me um, earlier this week. He said that the Star Wars build is, kind of, is new. I believe it's supposed to be in 2020, that they didn't get to make it, so that's new to the convention. And then and moving down here, we have the Ghost Rider right there on the road, so I like that a lot. But my favorite build, hands down, that he worked on was Poppy's Diner from Kingsman, uh, The Golden Circle, so the second Kingsman movie. Super detailed. I think he captured the lettering pretty well. He said that the like the railing at the back of the lettering pretty much works in his favor because that's a detail of like from actually in the movie. And so it kind of worked in his favor, keeping the lettering pretty sturdy. You even have the Kingsman logo next to that. And then he built it all inside this suitcase to kind of fit the theming of Kingsman. I think that was a very creative you know, choice to have that going on there. Yeah, you see uh, a couple of different style builds here with this collaborative layout that they did, and I think that's fantastic. There's also a little Beyond the Brick sticker uh, pointing down to a fun little uh, Beyond the Brick themed scene that you can uh, get a little gl glance out. You'll have to watch the more in-depth video we do on these to, uh, to see the rest of that there, but very cool stuff. And we've got some trains here as well, and a nice, very nice uh, kind of layout with lots of greenery fall trees and everything. I like that a lot. Then, of course, your your mech firing the missiles. Here's some more missiles. Uh, we've got post-quarantine uh, Woody here as well. Of course, uh, shirtless Woody always making an appearance, Brian. I always feel warm and fuzzy when I look at this. I don't know why. Very comforting. There's something something inside of me is just liking the way short of this uh, Woody looks, you know? Yeah. The chair is great as well. What chair? Oh, the chair. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Uh, then you see some Tron-inspired uh, builds. I think like it's like Tron Transformers yeah. crossover. Yeah, a combination of those two things. So you have the Optimus Prime, and then you also have the Soundwave as well. So it's like a combo build. I like it a lot. We saw it actually at Chicago, so it was nice to see it here again. These Nintendo consoles are fantastic. Yes, I love these. You have not only the classic consoles from the NES all the way up to N64, but GameCube, Switch, Wii U, Wii, and much more. I love that GameCube logo with Mario from Mario Sunshine and Luigi from Luigi's Mansion. And the Garfield is fantastic, too. Uh, obviously, I'm a big video game fan, so I loved seeing these, and especially in the scale. Very interesting way of pulling that off. The tiny controllers are just adorable there. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, they are. And all that charm continues into the SpongeBob builds over here, which I love seeing these. There was a very short, limited run on LEGO SpongeBob back in the day, and a very weird scale. Like They weren't 100% where they should have been, but these mocks take that to a whole other level with Patrick's house actually being made out of brick, and then SpongeBob's house looking correct. You have Tentacle Acres, which is all the different Squidward hanging around in the monotony. Um, love that episode of SpongeBob as well. This whole entire setup done by Vital Vitali, I, that right? That's the name? Vital I think so. Yeah, wonderful display. Are you surprised we haven't gotten more SpongeBob? I am very surprised actually. But until we get more SpongeBob, here is some more Star Wars builds. A little Mando and uh, Baby Yoda hanging out there. And then next to the Razor Crest. Oh, and you got your classic avatar here. Yep, we got Appa with a Fire Nation ship attacking each other. Love seeing this. And again, we need more Avatar and SpongeBob. There have been so many ideas projects based on that stuff, isn't it there? Just, it doesn't cease to happen. It just never happens, and it needs to happen. Like, 
Appa would just be such a fun build to have in a Lego set. And I think like a lot of people, especially seeing how much Avatar has grown its own popularity over the years since the first sets that they released, they should definitely bring it back. They should definitely bring it back. And then we got a little Betrayal House on the Hill and Sands. And I think that finishes out this section. Uh, I will say this, this little build here, the Shade, uh, which is a from a game called The Longing. I've, have you ever heard of that? I have no idea what that is. It says it's a contemplative game about waiting. Uh, I've been waiting for a lot of things in my life, but haven't seen this game, so I don't know. <laughs> so if anyone's played that, <clears throat> let us know in the comments. We'll see, we'll see how it is. So we'll just keep moving uh, this direction for now. This should work well. So as you thought we saw a lot of Transformers earlier, uh, get ready because we are about to launch in here with the craziest collection of Lego Transformers anywhere on the planet. I'm just going to say that right now. Yeah, this is incredible. Done by uh, Bricks Media Studios. And the display on this is wonderful, too, with all the LEDs in the background, making it a unique display piece for all these Transformers. I can't even comprehend how much time goes into designing each one of these, making them unique and colorful in their own right. He also has lights in the kind of the black pyramid base, and so the lights change color and everything, adding that extra effect. I mean, there's hundreds of these. It's just endless, and it just it's a bunch of detail into how they look and making sure that they look as accurate to their versions that we see. And not just he didn't just like go and make you know like say one of each type. He made like multiple versions of how they've appeared like over the years. So I do like that a lot. And as we go past the Transformers, we find ourselves with another Transformer here done by Adrian Drake. This is using the uh, Porsche, I believe, 911 set, transforming it into the, uh, I think, Autobot Jazz there. Yes, that's correct. So really great work. We got some chilled monkey brains also by Adrian. And then a little Kermit build. Uh, let's see. Here we've got a bunch of the like, Lego sitcom sets whole bunch of Harry Potter. I like the big Harry Potter sign there. It's very nice. Some more Harry Potter buildings. This next section here is absolutely fantastic. We've interviewed this builder at Brick Rodeo down in Texas over the years. And I think this is his first Brick Fair, but I love his work. Yeah, I especially love the cleaning robot from Wally. -E. And then anytime you're having connection issues watching a Beyond the Brick video, you'll look at this screen with a laptop buffering. Very cool. Uh, this this is one of his more recent builds here. This vacuum is so amazing with the skeletons up in there for the, the carcasses of the minifigures that have sat inside the vacuum. And he's got it so realistic. I think there's even a little light brick on there. So if people want to see more of this stuff, we've got more in-depth videos on a lot of these builds on the channel. Just uh, shout out to Ian, fantastic builder. His Wii is an absolute classic. Among Us? Yes. Among Us? Are you an imposter, Joshua? Oh, no. Oh. I was never good at the imposter. I got found out. I think John's the imposter. I think so. Okay, we'll just, keep, we'll just move on. I love the Wii remote in the screen here. So amazing. And then the, the shrink ray to create the smaller one as well. The adorable little uh, micro version next to the making the breakfast build. And then check out uh, the Lego movie here, Blu-ray. Fantastic. I especially love the Jumanji board game that he made. This is a very detailed piece, especially with that lettering at the top. I'm like, I don't think I could do that. So props and to the builder. He switched it up so it actually opens up and the whole game oh, wow. board is inside there now. It didn't used to, yeah. Nice, that's awesome. I gotta check that out later. And then probably the most iconic uh, media ever made, which is VeggieTales. You've got Bob and Larry right here represented. So absolutely fantastic work there. And then we've got some Fergus Ponds with Live from the Upside Down. Fergus is a great builder. This is, I think, from the most recent season of Stranger Things. Yeah, that's a, that's a wonderful scene. Josh, have you seen any of these clocks in your day? Uh, I have. Uh, you're, <laughs> you're in trouble, my guy. <laughs> you're in trouble. What, what, what clock? I love, I, love, I love old clocks. I, well, maybe after you watch that season, you might not. Yeah, you might not like that one. I do love these uh, Metroid builds over here. This is cool with Samus, the Samus bust with the Metroid breaking out. And you're even seeing a little bit of that with uh, a Space Pirate, Samus Aran, and then there's also uh, 
Fazon suit, Fazon suit, Samus. Can we take a look at how precarious that pyramid is holding up? The, look at all those pickup bear crops. I'm getting nervous just looking at that. The anxiety levels are at an all-time high, man. This is crazy. And then we've got a few. I think Batman. Uh, well, this is a Rolling Stones themed build, and then you've got some Batman themed stuff here as well. That's Nelson and Murdoch Law Office from the Daredevil show. So we actually, on the top of the building, I caught this earlier at the convention, it's basically kind of representing the scene from, I believe it's season two when they introduced Punisher. And it's like him and Matt Murdock on the roof just kind of duking it out because they don't really like each other at the start of it. And then you also have the regular version. So you have Matt uh, Murdock down there, Falky Nelson, and then Karen. So I like it a lot. Perfect. Should we keep heading this direction past the deflated uh, bounce house? Very sad looking. Yeah, no, no bouncy happening there right, right here right now. Very unfortunate. Here we see a little secret garden build. And then you've got a little elementary school. And this is based on a real school in Maryland. Looks like maybe a little more Harry Potter. Uh, tons of superheroes and custom minifigures all throughout here. And then let's see, we've got Metroid Prime. This is fantastic. So I love the, the way they, this builder did kind of the, the base there with those big sections. Yeah, it's like the massive chunks of pieces and kind of creates this nice sort of rock work that feels very detailed. So I like it a lot, especially the, the, the dragon in the center. I really like that a lot. And then also for Metroid Prime, it looks like all of this is, uh, a lot of this is Metroid Prime kind of themed here, these various scenes this one is great with the rocks coming over and the lava coming out great sense of action yeah definitely i like a lot of frozen sort of action sequences that people incorporate in their build so it always captures that nice detail and makes it stand out and some smaller micro and then you've got uh you've got this great little ace of spades weapon here here you see some star wars you got the big uh kind of walker battle happening, a whole bunch of droids about to be smushed by that thing. Uh, they better watch out. Definitely clear the way and hopefully they don't get hurt. <laughs> and as we move to the other side, you've got your classic kind of Hoth layout. I like uh, I like this build next to it as well that's like some kind of a spaceship, I want to say. I'm not sure what it is, but it looks very intriguing. Like I, like Especially the center with that round shaping and stuff and the gray bling that's going on. It looks very detailed. And around the corner here, we've got this massive uh, battle happening here. This is the Battle of Pelennor Fields from uh, Lord of the Rings. And I love the, the giant like elephant-like creatures and the big siege machines being pushed up and then the rocks sticking out through the, the middle of the fortress there. For sure, there's a lot of detail going on here, especially just seeing all the minifigures and stuff just kind of laid out, ready to go to battle. It's a lot of detail there. Next to that, we've got uh, a couple of fantastically themed, uh, we've got like the one is like superheroes and the other one is I think the uh, uh, Lord of the Rings spider themed. Okay. I like the uh, the killing joke one for Joker and this whole sort of scenery and stuff going here. I like this one a lot. You can see like different levels and different rooms in each level. So I do like that sort of concept going on there. And you can even see like the hearts at the bottom kind of reminiscent of like the whole Lego video game sort of thing. So I like that too. Next to that is uh, Shalob's Lair, uh, which is, yeah, you got the spider. It's kind of like uh, all the different levels there. It almost reminds me of like a uh, Donkey Kong type game or something. Like that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, that's go. cool. <laughs> Great work, thank you. Here is Seth incorporating the uh, tall neck. So uh, I think this this was obviously a set that Lego released earlier this year, but then they've created a whole landscape all around it uh, based on, is it Horizon Zero Dawn? Yes, correct. The intricate details of this building, though, off to the side, looks amazing. Like how it uses very tiny pieces, creates this very worn and abandoned sort of look. So I think the builder did a decent job with it, sure. And next to that is the Uncharted, uh, Drake's Fortune. Really nice build. Got a life-size uh, BD-1. And then got the Maverick and Goose's F-14 Tomcat. So this is from the original Top Gun, I believe, right here. Yeah. This is, I, I love Top Gun. I love the movie. So it's nice to see builders kind of incorporating more Top Gun. Hopefully we'll see a bunch of that going into further conventions and stuff like that.
Check out the super cool posability on the guy over there as well. That's really yeah, nice. He's got the whole like knee bending and everything. That's cool. Like I've seen some people do that in the past, so it's cool to see them. You know, still doing that sort of technique with the legs and stuff. So, uh, Karate Kid came out when you were a kid, right, Kirk? I was definitely not existing at that time, but I do love the franchise. Uh, I'm really excited for. I believe it's season four or five we're getting for Cobra Kai at the end of the year. Um, so I'm looking forward to you know seeing more builds, hopefully for Karate Kid and that whole franchise. It's a great story, and I think they captured you know the All Valley Tournament pretty well. Then what do we have next to that here? What is this? This is oh oh wow! This is actually from the like towards the end of Avatar: The Last Airbender, the uh, the series. So you have Zuko fighting his sister, and then you have all the other uh, characters and stuff from the show there. You even have the cabbage guy where he's constantly saying, my cabbages, because they're he's cabbages are constantly getting ruined in the show. So it's nice to see him there. But this is a very nice build. Like I almost bypassed until you called it out. Like this is awesome. Yeah. Fantastic work. The posability on the the fire and, and oh. water is so great there and kind of creating that like wave effect and kind of meeting in the middle is fantastic. Sure, for sure. And then we'll keep going down here. So Got, uh, I think this says it's something Pokemon related. Uh, a little White House build from Fortnite and Ninjago Crystallized Battle. And then that finishes out this section for us. We can keep going down this direction just to try to stay out of people's way. It looks like there's a big group of people at the next section over. So let's go ahead and we'll hit, we'll hit up this section here just to try to make sure we complete these sections as much as possible and here we go into a very very compact city so you've got uh this big godzilla fighting some kind of like samurai mech thing there that godzilla monster is insane just the whole sort of like lava like details and stuff over it you even have like mothra in the background sort of so this is a pretty detailed like you know to see all the sort of a uh, godzilla themed creatures and stuff in here you even have like king kong in the back and big robot and stuff down there this is cool it's a nice sense of action throughout the whole uh, city layout here. So this is, I think, the RVA Lux. This is Richmond Lego Users Group. So uh, Richmond, Virginia, not too far from where the show is. Obviously, it's going to have a fairly big presence here as well. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And as we go down here, we've got kind of a Legoland. Looks like maybe a theater. I like this one, the building in the back there with all the like printed pieces. That's a very interesting like concept of like having all those incorporated there just to kind of get a sense of like the history of all the printed parts that Lego has kind of made over the time. So this is a cool concept. Some fantastic trains up front here. We've got another rock monster. Lots of monsters. Throughout. And I guess the, there's the city kind of falling apart there as well. That is really unique. Uh, cool. It reminds me of a certain thing that happens in season four. If any of the viewers know what that like kind of happens, it reminds me of that thing that happened in season four, Stranger Things. So I do like that a lot. There, there we go. There we go. Lots of Stranger Things fans out there. Speaking of fandoms, big Doctor Who fans out there as well. Shout out to that. So the, I think this whole the idea of this whole uh, layout, I guess, is that it's all kind of like falling apart. Yeah, it's definitely like a, a whole lot of terror and stuff going on with all the creatures kind of taking over. You even see the very cute but also kind of creepy creatures from a uh, Lego movie too with the Duplo people. So I do like that a lot. And we'll move around some builders hard at work collecting, uh, getting their parts all organized here. And behind that, you can see some really great landscaping. You see a UFO coming down to like a, a Mayan looking temple there in the middle. And then a great train tunnel that's been built. I love the flower beds. Everything about this is fantastic. Yeah, the flowers definitely do help it stand out. And you can see all the builders and stuff working on more of the flowers to kind of add it to the build. So I like that they're working together, getting the job done. So I'm looking forward to seeing how it looks. And we've got some intense army building, intense minifigures on a base plate over here next to this big uh, Eye of Sauron type tower here. I'm not sure you could like physically fit another minifig on this display. It's, it's pretty jam-packed. It's pretty jam-packed, but it definitely does create that sort of chaos sort of feel of this model, so I do like that. Yes, and even next to that are more and more minifigs on base plates as well. Yeah, like th this person likes minifigs for sure. <laughs> I, don't, I think they definitely like them. And as we move around the corner then, you've got, uh, this is 
bricks in tree houses. So I believe this is based on the Treehouse Master TV show the builder was telling me earlier. See like scenes from that. I've never seen the show, but I'm assuming they try to build like really cool tree houses. Yeah, I think I've seen something similar to that. And it might be the show. I think it may have been on like one of the HGTV channels or something like that. I think I've seen it before. So this is a cool concept, like seeing that kind of incorporated in Lego and stuff. I think it worked out. You've got like a Calvin and Hobbes inspired build in the back there. A farm with uh, Wizard of Oz inspiration, some micro kind of vignettes. I think back there, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's trying to recreate, like recreate the sort of a uh, scene with the Batmobile going up into the moon from the original Batman movie with uh, Michael Keaton. So I do like that a lot. That's cool. And it's like a forced perspective sort of thing going on too, with like the clouds and you have like different layers to it. So that's nice. Exactly. And then this build out here is really cool. So the aliens are coming and using these flashlights to kind of light up a lot of those neon pieces and create a great effect against the black pieces. Definitely is going to stand out during like World of Lights when all the lights go off and you have everything lit up. So I'm looking forward to coming back and seeing how that looks. And then we've got this nice aquarium and a big concert happening on stage next to that. Awesome. The whole, all the lights and stuff like lighting up like there's a decent amount of light builds going on here. So we're going to see a lot of that once the lights go off and just see how it all shines in the dark. So this is definitely cool too because you have like a lot of scenery and like action sequences going on with them playing their instruments and stuff so i like that mm -hmm. uh this build here actually the builder was showing to me earlier is really fantastic so it's a theater but you can switch out all of these different scenes for what's happening there and you can add like multiple layers there's a roof section with a chandelier it's fantastic here so very very cool stuff there as well really like that and then Western, always got to give a shout out to Western here. I love to see all the Western stuff on display. Uh, you got train layout and then all sorts of fun Western buildings. I even like the use of the raised base plate for that building in the back there. Yeah, for sure. Definitely yeah, making use of those like sort of big and chunky parts that Lego has made over the years and just making sure that you can still use it and still create something pretty awesome. Coming over here, we've got a ton of little vignettes. It looks like we maybe even got like Black Swan with some movement here. Edgar Allan Poe's writing room. A uh, bunch of nice kind of like mosaic scenes in the back there. A really great. Brian, uh, where, where does Space Jam rate all time on your movies? Is Space Jam 1 or Space Jam 2? Uh, I think it's from Space Jam 1. There's a little build here. Okay, Space Jam 1, I can rank at least in the top 100 Space Jam 2. We don't talk about I haven't seen either, so I'll take your word for it. And then we've got a whole bunch more little vignettes here. Uh, looks like just using different characters, collectible minifigures, Disney characters, whatever it might be. Yeah, I like how they kind of like have all these different rooms and stuff. Like builds that do that, and you see like this wide array of detail and different scenery is very awesome. Nice vehicles. Here's just a. This is a printed and stickered parts, just, uh, all across Lego history. Different parts there. It's kind of cool to see those all just mashed together onto one plate. Yeah, it's kind of like the building that we saw earlier. Like This is pretty much the same sort of concept, but it's all in one sort of layout, so you get to just kind of peruse through it and see something that might catch your eye. And then we've got this monochrome uh, red train here, so that is very unique. This is a train built entirely in red, including very rare parts never included in sets. Three different elements, apparently. So, very, very unique build there. King Neptune riding uh, a whole wave of like sea creatures there. Maybe that's just kind of the wave in general taking him into the beach. And then you've got the giant Hydra in the back. And there's even a little poster, like a movie poster up there for it. So the wave is made out of the very bottoms of Poseidon. So like the ghost from Hidden Side and all that, that is awesome. Mm -hmm. And then we're back around to the city section here. So you see a little motel, a little, uh, little graveyard, a little spookiness there for you. Yeah, this is uh, all about Godzilla, it seems like, because we've got Mothra, Godzilla attacking the city, and obviously from Godzilla versus King Kong, the giant snowman making an appearance. And I think at this time it's a good time to take a break, get something to drink, maybe. I mean, if you want, I mean, yeah, I mean, I can, I can do, I can do that. I think, well, I think we'll stop here for now. We're back now at the Bionalog sign and some more Bionicle sections here. So you can see very well lit creations in front of the Bionalog sign there. As we round the corner, we get into the mosaic section as well. A whole lot of great examples of lenticular mosaics. I think we've seen these in past years. These have been making an appearance for a number of years here at Brick Fair. 
Definitely, yeah, and the Bionicle presence is in full force more than ever with such beautiful creations. There's like three full tables worth of Bionicle. It's incredible. This is actually the smallest of the few tables with creatures and mechs looming all throughout this, here. Uh, this <laughs> Jonah mech there, I love how it's the whale with the missiles on it. Yep, that's awesome. And then I especially love over here this life-size Toa mask that's weathered. That's incredibly cool. Is that what, what is the material made out of? Do you know? It's probably 3D printed, okay. but weathered. Cool. Yes. Very, very nice. Oh, what is uh we got Jin Ursa Pond there? <laughs> that's that's pretty these are all very suspicious over here. <laughs> very nice. Great characters all throughout here. Fantastic golden character. You've got a uh, little like tornado. This is tornado with the animals. Sharknado, rather. It's a Sharknado. Yes. And then more, ja more Jack Stone. Getting stoned. Oh, I like this like cracked mosaic behind these characters here. What a great way to display these lovely Bionicle. And then some really nice scenes here using this, uh, was it like a shield piece or something? Yeah, like an armor piece to make up like a stone flooring there. Very, very cool. And uh, a wonderful spider beach scene here. You know, you got your gold palm trees just a day at the beach in Bionicle Land. Yeah, that's what you can expect when you're just chilling in a hammock, you know. And then moving across the aisle, we've got kind of a space city section. So this is some of everything. You've got a whole bunch of spaceships laid out here. This is the Immortal Empire, the Grand Galactic Empire. And then across from that, you see uh, this is a fantastic amusement park. And I love kind of how clean this is here. You've got almost like a corn maze type idea, the spinning sort of like teacups. Really, really good work there. And then you've got Starburst here, which is fantastic lighting. Uh, you've got, let's see, some kind of like little uh, merging game there. I love this Tensegrity floating castle. This is awesome. Yeah, that is quite the scene for a Tensegrity build. This is a Lego Tower inspired build, so that was a mobile game. I think uh, Lego Tower is still active, right? I would say fairly active. Definitely a very popular mobile game. I love this zoo over here. There's a garden as well as a zoo. Uh, we're seeing some uh, polar bears and penguins, which I'm very partial to. Shout out to Dave Shefsick with the uh, the Central Zoo here. Fantastic work. And you see some builders still hard at work on this uh, city train monorail layout. Check out this incredible bins of trees here. Great landscaping going on. You can see a drive-in movie theater. And come around to the front here. Lots of modular type buildings being put in. You can see all those bins of trees being placed one by one on the layout. Each spot selected very carefully for the most impact for the public coming through here. We've got a Batman Joker inspired building. I love the like cracked window effect. A little cinema in there. And then we've got uh, moon base modules here. So moon base is something we've seen in a lot of different brick fair shows where everyone can kind of bring their own module and they connect them all up at the show here. Some very unique characters. Yes, some, some Disney eggs making an appearance, and then all different colors making up this moon base and the verticality of this giant tower over toward here. There's a spot to grow some uh, plants and whatnot. I love the endless detail that you can look inside and out on this moon base. Is that, is that, a, is that a duck or a goose down there? That, that looks like a goose. Looks like a goose. Wow. Moon base has changed since I was a kid. Yeah, right? In a good way. And then some more great little uh, spaceships here as well. I love this this color scheme on this one is fantastic. Next, I think we've got uh, another one of the really big Bionicle sections here. So, so you mentioned Brian. I think it was like three Bionicle sections, tons and tons of builds here on display. We're starting right here with uh, a nice little uh, YouTuber build. This is a Bionicle talk show. Uh, that's what I want to green light to NBC for actually my career, so I don't know where they got the idea from. But can you, I can just imagine you hosting a Bionicle talk show. I mean, I think that's, I think that's your real calling in life. Lowest ratings in the history of NBC. <laughs> Great little statues all in here. Watch out, cameraman, so you don't run into the big pole. 
John, don't run into the electrical box. We don't we don't need that liability. The insurance doesn't come. Oh, check this out. Using like the planet pieces there. That's fantastic. I love the ones that are layered like this. You can appreciate them a lot easier. Some really great stuff on display. This is a Toa Taco Nuva. I'm partial to that one. And you see a little Star Wars big fig here. Paraka, a little Jurassic Park. Oh, I like the purple and gold. Always works really well. This is a very spindly creature. Great effect. Ooh, this is really nice. Mother of the Reef. It's like a coral reef built on top of a turtle. And then you've got the skull here. Got some characters that look like they're being worked on. You got a whole uh, station, so kind of working on custom masks and bionicle parts. And nice uh, blue and orange there. I like all of this stuff. Oh, this uh, this one with the red, the red kind of moon effect back there is very nice. Fantastic stuff here. Oh, check this one out. Yeah, that's. It, there's a lot of symbolism here. It almost feels like something out of uh, uh, mythology. Oh, I I love these ones up here. This is a uh, a vision of some kind. I love the the gradient effect there on the tail. It's lovely. I think this is all Nathan Dawn is the builder's name. Fantastic stuff here. Really, really good work. Uh, and same builder, a oh, Woomy World. He goes by online. You might have seen, have seen some of his work. This is the Alexander the Roaming Titan, which we have uh, have an in-depth video with him on that build. It's fantastic. It's this cool drum cycle, motorcycle type build mixed in with some of these other characters. I uh, like we got this guy hanging out on the shoulder of a much larger character. And then lots of smaller stuff kind of mixed in. Oh, I like the purple kind of custom work on the armor there. It's nice teal stuff. Fantastic lighting in this crystalline tree here. Oh, I like this uh this this little dinosaur here is great. Yes, that's what happens when you're disconnected from the internet with Google Chrome. Mm, yes. I've seen that at a past couple of shows along with this very nice tree, the Link Bionicle. Um, good stuff and incredibly colorful as well with the translucent orange representing Ice Planet from 2002. Oh, check this out. The sun and star peacocks are amazing. Very Van Gogh-esque. Yes, almost like Bionicle parts you take up the tree, but not so much for the two peacock. It's a nice combination of the two. I just looked at the mock card and it said it's inspired by Van Gogh, so I guess that would be why. That totally makes sense. Uh, yeah, this uh, Automaton Peacock as well, that's really neat. It says by Seth Peacock. Is the builder's name Peacock, or is that just a like, like a weird coincidence? It might be a weird coincidence, but holding up the namesake incredibly well. <laughs> Some nice flowers back there. Archangel. Some great lighting running through that. We're uh, pretty soon after shooting this tonight going to have the world of lights. So that'll be fantastic. It's a raptor cataphract. Heavily armored there. I love this like mounted head. And then the little uh, carpenter is funny. There's a, a lot of character with those builds. And that continues over toward here. There's some like dinosaur looking creatures, a crab, a centipede, and even characters like Darth Vader as a bionicle scale creature. So that's awesome to see. There's like a bionicle on a surfboard. There's also more mythical creatures as we get down to this section. There's the arrival of spring with a very nice black, white, and pink contrast toward the top. Oh, I love this bird here. This, uh, it's called She Flies With Her Own Wings by uh, Patrick Biggs. The flowers on the end are really great. Yeah, that really brings out all the detail in that model. Mm -hmm. Ooh, check out this thing. What is happening here? I don't even know, but there's like a vat with all the red pieces in it there. Yeah, I think the theme with all the Bionicle displays this year is death and rebirth, so that exemplifies it in that mock right there. I think that finishes out this section then, so we'll keep going on 
to, I think some Star Wars stuff might be next here. You can see they're uh, testing the great ball contraption as we walk by. We'll definitely have a more in-depth video going through all of that during the public hours. But they're kind of making sure it's all ready for the public who's going to be coming in tomorrow. So I think our next layout here will be Empire Lug, uh, obviously iconic Star Wars Joshua, builds. I just think I just think David Hall is the most overrated Star Wars creator I've ever see. Oh, there he is, right there. Not just Star Wars, really any creator. It just overrated. Uh, chalk it up. You you have too much. I'm going to take over your position as the number one Lego Star Wars fan on YouTube, and I'm going to do release videos for Lego and take your throne. How does that sound, David? That sounds good? At this point in the tour, we needed to create more drama to keep the viewers watching. Well, no, I saw the drama over here. Something, I don't know. What, what, did this fall? Did they recover from that? That fall? Okay, good. They're still rebuilding. What's over? Oh, no, wait. It was the, the, the Phantom Men. No. Oh, oh, hey, well, people can see our, our video from Brickworld. On the side, one of our friends sat on the side of the table, and it came crashing down with this built. And, and my man over here. Wow! Wow! Yes, it can be rebuilt, but this was a fantastic build. So people who saw our coverage of Brickworld Chicago might remember this from the Star Wars video game collaborative. So if you haven't checked that video out, definitely do it, and you can see this build in all of its glory there. So best of luck getting it back together. <laughs> uh, what is what is what is this build here that's still being worked on? Um, so this is, I was going to make a joke. I can't take a joke, so it's, I'm too late in the night. This is uh, Endor from episode I six. I thought it was the new Forceman set. Yeah, you know, it might as well be. Fantastic work on the trees there. Yeah, piles of pizza boxes is the key to everything at Brick Fair. Uh, this is some kind of base Star Wars thing. There's a lot of work still being done at the Star Wars tables here. Yes, there is. So do you know who made this one? I don't. It's Mr. Brickwiz of Beyond the Brick Contributor. Really? Yes. And I, I had to, you know, there's a, little, a lot going on in here. I had to add my own little essence in here. So, John, if you could zoom in. Uh, I am being held at gunpoint in the middle of the Star Wars mock. The guy with the blue hat right there, right behind what Greedo looks like. Yep, that's, that's Bricks O'Brien. Matt put that clone specifically there while I was here. So I'm being held at gunpoint at Brick Fair, Virginia. I never thought I'd be able to say that, but here we are. Wow, wow. Well, this is fantastic. Shout out to Matt. Some great work here. I love that. I think I knew he was oh, working Micah, on something big. Micah, where's my Mountain Dew? Where's my Mountain Dew? Awesome shirt. I'll give you some, yeah, yeah. Like, whenever we have the intermission because of World of Lights, I'll get you, I'll get you some Mountain we, we Dew. We might need to do that tomorrow. Okay. We'll, we'll, do it, we'll do it tonight and just edit it in. Magic okay. of editing. Right, there we go, yeah. 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 All right. This guy infringed on my copyright. Did you know that? I, no, no. We'll can, you, can we sue him? We'll use all our lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> Those are powerful lawyers. All right. We'll get to that in a little while. This is uh, Sorgan from The Mandalorian. Oh, this I really like this battle. This was super cool. It's kind of like uh, fighting against the, the uh, big bad um, you know, walker there. That was very, very cool. And you got some smaller scenes throughout here. This is Orioles Park at Camden Yards. Now that's a clone turbo tank right there. That's great. Juggernaut. Yeah, that's a that's a great one. I love seeing this ship. It's not quite where it needs to be right now, the Havoc Marauder. But seeing this, ba the Bad Bad Shuttle, I believe, um, looks great when it's all built up. Lego Fantasy Citadel. So this is based on the fantasy card game Citadels. I love the clean lines of this build. That green roof contrasts so nicely and makes it stand out. Yeah, it looks like something out of a video game. And you got a little stone keep. And then uh, here's a little more from the Star Wars video game. This is the Battle of Sargasso. Uh, this is Empire. Uh, I think this is Halo. Halo inspired, maybe, I want to say. Yeah, something like that. I don't know what exactly that's from. Oh, there's some more uh, military action happening over here. R2-D2 is at the helm of that helicopter, so trust him with your life. That's pretty uh, snazzy. Uh, there's another display of the Middle Ages over here. We're seeing a rise in more ca castle builds now that Lego has started to pay attention to the theme a little bit more. Absolutely. I don't know who made this mock over here, but again, I love the clean lines and the color that pops out of here. Uh, we have Church Dream. This is by Levy, and I love the sideways building techniques to make up almost a mosaic in the very back of this decrepit church. This is based on the movie The Revenant, so very, very cool build. We got a Senate build from Star Wars. Ooh, this is the duality of nature. 
Very, very cool. That explosion in the background there, or is that a plant? I think an explosion? Not entirely sure. Levi also made this dream scene over here, which looks like something out of Star Wars with uh, the, the vibrant nature of like a Mos Eisley Cantina. Mm -hmm. We have a whole in-depth video with him on that as well. Very, very cool. We got Coruscant, and we also have Kashyyyk, the Battle of Kashyyyk, with another giant juggernaut clone turbo tank. And there's even an Amtrak making, a, making an appearance here, so that's sweet. More custom Star Wars ship. There's like a Republic stun tank, which is excellent. Another Lego Star Wars reference for the video games. D5 Mantis Patrol Craft, Liberator Class Fighter, and so much more heading down the Empire Log Table. The Jedi Hunt on Scalumi. There's also a Castle Gate, K-Town Outpost, and then the Mall Venator Ramp. Oh, the lights here are so good. Yeah, that's a great one. Uh, and then also the Battle of Felucia over here. Um, I think that's what the last planet was, too. I got that mistaken. Um, lots of vibrancy in a Star Wars building. You never would have thought that. We haven't even touched on this massive no, building. I, I was giving David Hall some flack there. Obviously, have to respect the incredible effort him and the guys put together for the Jedi Temple, where Anakin is going to uh, invade and have a word with the younglings that are inside. So this is just the outside of it, but there's details on the inside as well. Uh, they've been working on repairing this thing for like two days uh, as it was a little bit messed up in transit. But now you can see the inside is filled to the brim with clones, Jedi, Ooh. all battling it out. And then at the very top is the Senate that you see, obviously, from the prequel movie. So little references to Cad Bane and other characters littered throughout this. An incredible effort by David. Yes, very, very cool there. And did they make an announcement? Are they about to shut the lights off on us? They're about to shut the lights off, and we're about to get funky up in here <laughs> for World of Lights, which is a, an exclusive thing you can see. We don't cover it here on Beyond the Brick because it's hard to cover it in the darkness. So that's your reason to come out to Brick Fair, Virginia, to see World of Lights for yourself. So we're going to stop there so they don't shut the lights off on us uh, mid mid video, and then we'll pick back up tomorrow night and finish the rest of the tour. Yes, sir. We are back on Saturday night here at Brick Fair to... <laughs> we are back now on Saturday night of Brick Fair, Virginia to complete our tour here of the convention show floor. Unfortunately, Kirk had to go, so we shipped all the way from Germany in a new contributor. Yeah, it's so good to see you guys again. I'm here with you, and I will tell whatever I can do. That's good. That's, do your best. And, of course, Brian is still here. Yeah, we're back, and we are starting with some mosaics toward the back, where, next to the bathroom, which is not a testament to the quality of the builds at all. We have the best mosaic nomination among many others, some we've seen in previous brick fairs as well. Bob's Burgers, a park, butterfly, Steve Jobs, and an assortment of zoo animals toward the bottom. A nice collection of mosaics all throughout the back wall here. So they're kind of split between two different sections, but always cool to see them implement not just the art style, from, uh, that's Lego video. I was just gonna say, well, wow, we gotta stop at this one. It's, I mean, I get flack for liking Mario, but this is bold. This is powerful. And there's even more down toward here with uh, tiger symbolism in the mosaics, like a minimalist feature there. A squirrel hidden inside of a tree, a snail, and then this really nice Lego stained glass mosaic, which is 30 inches by 55 inches. Beautiful. Mike Ripley there, yeah, has had this build around, I think, for a little while. Really, really great build there. It looks fantastic when the lights are off, kind of world of lights. Are you a Toy Story fan? Of course I am. I've seen all those movies, and here we have the dinosaur. Lovely, lovely guy. And, of course, the second one here, also Toy Story related. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like me trying to describe things. Those are aliens. Those are aliens. I, I guess so, yeah. I guess so. Okay, <laughs> we'll start in here. This is like a friends. Are these like, these are like like a book material almost. Well, those are official play mats, and this and this is all part of the mixed section, which is a very eclectic name for this section. I don't know why they call it this, but we have a Duplo representation, which is few and far in between. Some recolors of some modulars that are made in a more friends-based city. And then something I don't think I've seen at Brick Fair or really any convention is having like an actual American football field, like something that would happen on Thanksgiving Day. I do love that. A big, a big band, halftime band is fantastic. And some more fantastic Duplo, yeah. Fairyland, Rainbow. I'm a Duplo expert here. So many lovely parts which are not available anymore. This tree, for example, is gone since many, many years, but it's lovely to see. There we go. I'm glad someone's an expert in something on this tour. We got the... Uh, 
fire station. Uh, you got a little inn here inspired by Hidden Side. Uh, Walking Dead, you got all the cars piled up and then just the lone horseman on the right side. That's pretty cool. Pinball, shout out to the Beyond the Brick sticker up there. And a little lonely post. This is the battle for the Super Force. Looks like some kind of mech type builds. Uh, we've got a fantastic Shackleton build here with the Endurance ship down in Antarctica. I love that. Toast. Some penguins. Look at the toast, the t transforming toast. We got some cake, a dragon, really nice addition to the mix sections over here. A beautiful looking gray and white spaceship, and then a tentacle duck release, the quackens. That's very nice. This really is. You never know what you're going to encounter walking around this section. Shout out to the duck. Yes, the duck. Uh, this this uh, ship here was like rotating earlier. It's very very cool. Kind of a steampunk vibe to it a little bit. The brick separator glee club here. <laughs> that is quite something. There's all, I love seeing creative uses of the brick separators. Definitely, and then that continues into the mini dioramas, all based around Unikitty, the many forms of Unikitty, all the way from pirates to robots, rocket ships, and much more. I love the iOS Angry Birds, little itty-bitty mock here. That's a really cool way of pulling that off. There's also a Phoenix gunship, featured like something on a Ninjago almost. Mm -hmm. A dragon reading a bedtime story, which is kind of the opposite of how it normally is. Some mechs, along with more mini mosaics. A Mountain Dew mech. Whoa, that's pretty sweet. Shout out to Micah. Absolutely shout out to Micah. Got to get some dew before we go to more of these sections here at uh, Brick Fair, Virginia. That looks like a giant barracuda or sea sentinel enforcer. I love that. the big fin on top there. Yep, that continues into a sea sentinel claw, the gunner, and many more mechs toward the very back of the mixed section. Got a Warthog, a FFTV1, and then some more micro scenes like Christmas, and then a micro castle, kayaking, superheroes, really, really cool. And then there's a Savannah, African Savannah, along with a medieval bakery, a dorm room in a scale model version, some trains, and many interesting mini models through here. This looks like a very nice fancy apartment with all sorts of botanicals in there, very privileged. And there's a, a train derailing. That's like, oh. the, that's like these tour videos represented right here. Very symbolic. Symbolic indeed. And that can, this is like, it appears to be based on a true story here. That's pretty crazy. Wow. It's always good to see trains, but they're unfortunately with an accident. But it seems to be a real story, yeah, a true story. We got a little Halo 4 gun and a little container ship in a bottle. I like that. And I think that Shout finishes out. this section out. Shout out to Thiago, Katarina. Jake Sadovich as well. Of course, all those great guys. All fantastic builders. Oh, this build here, I don't think I've really seen much of yet. Uh, this looks like a uh, little bit of a spooky build. And you know I'm a fan of spooky. This is nominated for Best Landscape. It's the other world, a possessed alternate universe with a great use of glow-in-the-dark elements, some translucent purple, poisonous rivers, and what almost could seem like a Halloween-themed uh, modular building system toward the very front of the display. Love the spooky, especially with the skeleton horses and the different types of aesthetics to make it all complete. This is fantastic. Yeah, that, that color scheme looks amazing. You've got some Ukrainian-themed builds here, a uh, little snail lug action. And then uh, we got a little bit of Duplo. Wow. More Duplo. All those elements are gone. So again, good to see them here. Yes, you see some rare Duplo. And then this is a big, like, uh, Snailtopia fairy garden. You see uh, snails and ladybugs and all sorts of stuff in a 3D printed flower. Now we come back over here to the big city section. So this is Charm City Lug. And they have what I would say is probably the most impressive city of any layout here at the entire convention. It totally is. And the shining star in the very middle there, of course, everything's excellent, of course. But the Avengers Tower, and is that, that's done by Mel, right? Uh, no, I think that's Bevan's Bricks. That's I think, that? yep. That's Bevan's Bricks. Okay, yes. just want to make sure I get the clarification here. Probably the best Avengers Tower I've ever seen, ever, bar none. We will have an in-depth video on the channel from that for sure. And also, I mean, we have all those giant skyscrapers, but the small things I would, would I have in mind. The brick filet there yes, over there is yeah. awesome. Fantastic Chick-fil-A model. Uh, there's also this Mary Poppins build yeah. here, which I, I really enjoy as which, well. Which moves, so right now it does not, but it can shake. Mm -hmm. 
We'll continue on around the corner of this. You can see the train there. And then you get to section here. I think this is based on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh, have you ever seen this show? Uh, I have not had the honor of doing so. I'm too busy uh, playing Minecraft. Mm -hmm. Priorities. <laughs> Many priorities and sleeping. So yeah, not, not quite yet, but this is a very intricate, uh, nice mock by Sandy. And next to that is some really nice little scenes here. And then we've got uh, Fowler Family Funhouse and some great like mech uh, creations in the back there. And then we got a whole bunch of really cool Star Wars scenes, very, very nicely done. And uh, Mandalorian, big scene up front here. And of course, we have the palace the way it should be. Oh, oh okay, you call, call in, calling anybody out there? No, 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 I have no one in mind, but this is really great, I mean, to see the whole thing. Shout out to Charm City Lug logo with a, uh, with a crab, because I think they're from Maryland. That absolutely makes sense, because that's a Maryland, Maryland flag. There's a wide variety of uh, other mocks. I love the, the Looney Tunes one in the very back there between uh, Daffy and Bugs. Always like seeing that. And then some interesting cityscapes here. I really like the outfoxed inn toward the back. That's an interesting display for what would be a hotel. I wouldn't want to be a hen si sitting in the fox den, but you know, I guess you do what you got to do in this economy, you know? I love this, I love this little setup here with the, uh, the Vespa and the traffic cones around the water leak there. What do you think of this uh, historic train on display? This looks good, very realistic, a nice addition to a city, and the whole setup here is fine. Uh, there's some great buildings all the way in the back there. This is a very deep display. There's uh, Charm City Cakes on the right. And shout out to Brian, because this reminds me of Lego Super Mario. <laughs> what does? Like the, the, the big stone is coming down, oh. Super Mario Kart, you know what I mean? What, uh, thwomp? Yes, a thwomp, which is, I guess, what Andres is referring to with the giant skull <laughs> island thing there. I was thinking more so King Kong, but we can go with a thwomp. That's okay. This is accentuated by Port Royale. So this is what John created all throughout this entire display. There's crocodiles attacking the very back of the pirate ship that's fully loaded. And battles happening all throughout this entire coastline. And the crown jewel is obviously the thwomp. I mean, the skull island. Yeah, and what I like is here, those colors of this tiny house there, like sand green, it's perfect. Yes. As a town planner, you know your, your colors very well. And see if we can get John out from inside the barriers. You've got some small little vignettes here as well to finish this section out. This build is awesome. We've seen yes. it at Brickwell Chicago, so unfortunately it's not running right now, but it's lovely. Shout out to, to Kevin, who has done just a, a ton of incredible builds from all, all over the place, lots of genres. The video's up on Beyond the Brick? Yes. So shout out. Uh, okay, and then coming right across, I believe this was also a collaborative by the same lug. This is a, a massive pirate island uh, layout. Definitely got some like Assassin's Creed Black Flag kind of vibes here uh, as we're, we're looking at this fantastic fort, which is based off the old uh, um, fort, uh, is it El, El Dorado, I think is the Imperial? Exactly, and little game here. There's, everything is custom beside one thing, which is not custom. Bowser's airship. No, the ship right there. <laughs> no, it's no, it's literally Bowser's airship. That's not custom. <laughs> yeah. I literally reviewed that set for Beyond the Brick. That okay. is not custom. There are two ships. <laughs> I mean, the Bowser one and over there. Like, the, it's the kind of the, one of the first pirate ships ever. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, but, two. But two. We'll, we'll definitely have an in-depth video on this display. This is absolutely fantastic, and there's so much to see here from the town to the large ships, the, the fort, even this islander section here is fantastic. Great work there. So we will head on over to this section, and this is, I believe, just some more Star Wars stuff. So there's a number of spots with Star Wars. Here we have a battle of Kashyyyk. So if you saw our coverage from Brickwell Chicago, there was a giant Kashyyyk build, like an insanely huge tree. So same idea, just a little bit smaller variant here. You've got uh, the battle of Ajon Kloss. We'll go with that pronunciation there. And then this is epic hallway scenes in the history of Star Wars. So I guess Star Wars is now known for its epic hallway scenes. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think I've seen this next thing here before, the Yavin 4 unreleased set. I love the idea for this set, and I'm disappointed they never come out with it. But it's here, and it's apparently official and unreleased. So yeah, that's really interesting. It was supposed to be an actual Lego set. They never did anything with it. Then we have a video up on the channel as well for this uh, by Ian. It's a fantastic builder. This is the 
Mandalorian's uh, blaster rifle. Absolutely fantastic. And then if we go around the corner here, you've got another battle for Kashyyyk here. Lots of water, uh, then even a little train action to move the, the, the kind of fighter around there as well. Shout out, uh, Andreas, to the American size uh, beverage here. Yeah, exactly. This is like medium, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know that's why you come to the U.S. A little nice build there. I like how, yeah, this, this looks fine. And then this massive mountain, we also have a video on the channel, is absolutely incredible. This thing is so big, it's like uh, Darth Vader's uh, castle and also laboratory and like building future soldiers. There's just so much going on here. And on Bricklane, you won't find any slopes anymore in black. Yes, this builder has a monopoly on them. This is Camino. And then next to that is an Imperial hangar bay. I love kind of the very smooth look to all of that. You've got Clone Wars, the filler episode. Is that is that a legitimate thing? I mean, there's a lot of filler episodes in the Clone Wars, so it it, uh, it would not surprise me. But I'm not familiar with the source there's material. A basketball game going on. Yeah, that that sounds about on par for the the series. I love this. Ha yeah. Take a half second here. I love the this, Duplo. Wait, wait, wait. This is my job. I'm here to talk about Duplo, Brian. You can I, talk about everything. Okay. This is why I'm okay. here, my good friend. Okay, the good. only reason so I'm he's, here... He's so sad. He yeah. really wanted... So all elements are still around beside the black one. Now you can add everything. <laughs> I like I like the idea of this thing. That's all I wanted to say. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yes. No, it's a, it a great <laughs> idea. It is a great idea. I, this is... Is this our third Kashyyyk mock in this, in this section right here? We have enough Kashyyyk, my guys. Uh, that's all I'm seeing. It's just like very, and there's like a different take on the tree every time. Well, that's very interesting. Apparently Kashyyyk is very popular here these days. And then in a non-Kashyyyk, we have the Bakta farm on Tifara. We'll go, we'll go with that. I love the way that this is like tiered. Like you see like rice fields and things like that sometimes. That's super cool. Uh, and then you've got this kind of like platform that can move up and down in the back there. This is, I, I really like this build. Then you've just got a whole bunch of Star Wars ships. And that finishes this section out for us. And I think we'll just come on over here to these guys. I think this is the like sort of Mindstorms type stuff here and more robotics things. This build here is super interesting. Uh, again, Kevin Dark, who we mentioned earlier, uh, this is a Lego artificial intelligence, or what's known as a narrow AI, where he plugged in a few different uh, singers and authors, and then this writes haikus uh, using Lego and artificial intelligence. So this whole thing is just kind of insane here. It's really amazing just to watch it type out different haikus on the screen. It's more sophisticated writing than any children's book I could ever write. One day, you'll get there. One day. <laughs> then we have, uh, again, the same builder, Robot Arm. I, I want to give it a firm handshake, you know, make a multi-million dollar deal. i got to wait for it to unfirmly grasp. Hold on. We're going to wait, John. Wait on it. Wait on it. Wait on it. Put it there, bucko. Yeah, there we go. There we go. There it is. Fantastic. Wait, good demonstration. Chainsaw tank. Always amazing. And here we have... A really good looking bus from New Jersey. It looks stunning. Look inside, all details, fantastic. That is very detailed, very realistic. Yeah. Have thought, you talked to the builder? Of course I did, and I really love this bus. Yes. Very, very nice. Uh, some smaller vehicles here, then some much larger vehicles. Brian, have you collected any of these? Absolutely not. No, no further commentary. What's your favorite technic color? Lamborghini. Okay. Great choice, great choice. Look at this insane looking vehicle. I don't even know what that is, but uh, the builder, it's the Morgan three-wheeler. That's crazy. Got some more uh, Mindstorms type stuff. And then this is a whole engine here, I believe. Uh, it's a life-size model of a Chevy 454 big block V8 car engine from the 1970s. I think it's shut off right now. Normally there's a whole bunch moving. I'm so old. This is my Lego Technic. That's exactly. I thought you were going to say this is the engine you had in your car. Oh, this is when I, when I grew up. Like, this is Lego we had in the 80s. Oh, these are super cool. Some uh, automaton type creations. Look at this snow skier. That's amazing. I don't know how there's not a nomination next to this thing right here. The skier, this is stunning. And from Arlington, Massachusetts. Shout out. Shout out to Massachusetts. <laughs> you got you to real recognize in real right there. And this. 
Ta Taylor back at it again with the ostrich. There's multiple layers of movement, not just the legs or the body. This is the neck. Every it's incredible. Well, I love this little uh, fight scene here as well. This is uh, this is John when he's not at a Lego show. <laughs> That's him behind the desk putting out all those Facebook posts for y'all. There he is. That's uh, pouring those reels out. Of course, John is working here. Oh. I do also, and this is nice. This is a real sport. It's tennis. <laughs> it could be pickleball so easily yeah, though. Yeah, it could, but it's it's so good. I mean, look at those people here watching. We have a more in-depth video on a bunch of this stuff with the builders from last year here. Yeah. So if people want to check that out. You can you can see a lot of that on display. Really great stuff. You see a little frog action. The ship. Uh, you got a jellyfish here. Get all spooky with those chains hanging down. Yeah, that's wonderful. And again, the automation continues all the way through. I love the frogs on the very end here. So when this is in full effect as a builder is trying to cobble it together, it's okay. Yeah, you, we're going to pretend he's not there. But there's fish underneath the ocean. The flies move back and forth. And then not only that, but then the frog uh, tongue goes out toward the fly every single time that it passes through. So there's multiple layers of movement here. And this is in a Beyond the Brick video that the guys have done on its own. So a full showcase is there. We'll, uh, we'll see more of this very soon. Yes. We, we got it when it was looking good. <laughs> and now we're going to head back to this section. It kind of runs alongside the GBC here. And I think you've got kind of a big variety of stuff here once again as we start right here with this incredibly detailed model of a fire engine. And then the fire engines at work here, putting out the fires in Lego City. Here's a big train layout, and then you've got cool like Metro Motors building there. Yeah. I like the big helicopter. And again, lovely train. Yes. Yes, yes. you know, George. Do you feel like we don't represent trains well? No. Look at all those beautiful trains here. Oh, this RC car is super cool. I had that, had that growing up. Me too. <laughs> I, I am incredibly inspired by the Mario theme park oh. back there. I, I, I really have wanted to do something like that for a long time. I'm just so busy writing children's books that I just, I, I just haven't had the time, but it is lovely. Tell us more about this children's book. Uh, we can do that toward the end of the tour. I don't want to shell too bad. This is Disney. This is actually really cool. This is the, the original size of the, of the um, train station, which is really lovely here. Uh, Galaxy's Edge. Galaxy's Edge and Jungle Cruise here. This is awesome. Like, oh, you know, they included the Disney castle in their mock. That's totally okay when you're making such an incredible uh, Disneyland display. Then you've got your, your Marvel battle over here. Uh, you've got Daily Bugle, another Avengers Tower. Look at that giant graffiti, like, shipping container. And, like, every Marvel, I think you got DC characters, just superhero stuff in general going on here. I love the big tank there. And then this big, uh, this big what, what is that like rocket coming out of the top there? It's a rocket somehow? I mean, I'm... No, it, it's, it's the top of the building oh. falling down, yeah. Oh, of course. We have Brian here. Here's uh, Brick Arena. So this is a uh, hockey arena right here. I like the big like scoreboard in the middle and the big stands and everything. Super cool. You can play a soccer stadium. There's not enough uh, hockey and football, so that's cool to see. Mm -hmm. We've got the hay harvest, make, reminds me of home, makes me nostalgic coming out here to Virginia, seeing all, the, seeing all that hay being harvested. And you've got uh, just another nice city layout, shout out to Duncan. Of course, and Baskin Robbins. Another city layout uh, called Cornersburg by John. And then we have an amusement park toward the other side of this area. So the Ferris wheel looks like it's custom along with like the roundup. You have the spider, a popcorn stand, which is built really uniquely. And then the flying swings, as well as a carousel. So all great stuff here. And I can add, if you haven't talked to the builders yet, every carousel is here on the train. Oh, so the miniatures yeah. of everything on the so train. Re yeah, represent one of those oh. nice rides here. Very, very nice. Very impressive. Some fantastic kind of micro scale architectural models, Independence Hall, the Hungarian Parliament. Got an old British double decker bus. Whoa, what is this uh, European, like some big passenger car? That's the, that thing's crazy. It looks like a train car. That's what I rolled up to Brick Fair in on the Beyond the Brick Dime. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, it's just tables of drinks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. And this is a big uh, library conversion van. Uh, it's like you could, it's a mobile library. Yeah, it looks great. And now, quote Josh Lohenlin, a lot of vehicles here <laughs> with uh, four, and look at this. I mean, 
Four wheels. <laughs> I'll, say, I'll say I love this. I love that each has its own vignette in different color contrast all the way through all different years, all different makes and models, and it's awesome to see them all in a line together. It's not just based on one speed champion style, you know, six wide, eight wide. It's all different, and seeing it next to each other adds that much more to the display. It's all very cohesive as well. So shout out to Chris Elliott for making every single one of these of all different makes and models. Yeah, and don't get George and me wrong. We love cars. We don't know so much about them, you right, know? Right. We, yeah. just, we just lack the knowledge. Yeah. But this one is super cool. It's like half track. I, I would love to drive around Indiana on one of those. That's amazing. And you've got a nice park here and another garden. This is the edge of town, so kind of far out a little bit. This is super cool, like with the snot technique there, the door. So this this looks stunning. I like those little layouts, you know, little, little dioramas. So this looks really good. Mm -hmm. Nice little 7-Eleven. And then a little library again. A trailer by the sea with a guitarist and a little painter. You got the Pride Rally. The bedroom and exercise room. Yeah, and right next to this build, the invisible mock, which is my favorite of the show, right yes. here. You always had good taste. Yeah. Then you've got the uh, Arctic helicopter. Shout out to like the old Arctic theme there. That was always really cool. Some fantastic vehicles here once again. I like the, the king here. Uh, that color is really nice. Here's a really nice uh, town town layout with multiple levels of cars and trains. This was my thought. Like, this is based on the original Lego set, the hospital, but kind of enlarged the whole setting. It looks really good. Mm -hmm. And then some fantastic modular buildings. You've got multiple lanes with a divider in the middle. Very realistic. With a new road system, which is growing in my heart, I have to say, because you have so many opportunities. And you see the new hotel, like double size, which looks, yeah, which looks really great. Mm -hmm. We've got another Dunkin' Donuts down here. And then we've got a police department, with all the vehicles next door. And again, Duncan, the best donuts in town. <laughs> <laughs> Not a sponsor, unfortunately. Pizza, 7-Eleven, Five Guys, and then Walmart. Of course, this, this building was an old Walmart, now there's a Walmart just across the parking lot. You, you spent a lot of time in Walmart today. Yes, it's a lovely place. You find everything there, which is really awesome. And I like this build. So many details inside, so you can explore the whole thing here, standing for 10 minutes. An awesome build. Amazon warehouse. Got like the hospital little diner there. And I think that finishes this section out for us. So we did we did this, so we'll keep going on over here then. And we have more Star Wars. More Star Wars, more Star Wars. Star Wars, military, cities. You get it all here at Brick Fair, Virginia. <laughs> let's, let's see how many more Kashyyyks we can spot today. This is the invasion of Geonosis. And you've got a Yavin 4, the Spice Mines of Kessel, the Clone Base Attack. Some smaller vignettes, the assault on uh, Saluk, Saluk, Salami, That's I think that's what it's called. Star Wars Bogano. This is really fantastic. Look at the, the rock work here using those long slopes. Yeah, and I can't even imagine how much Duplo is in the back there to keep this thing entirely secure. Love seeing all the rock work on the multi-levels and the TIE Fighter for scale at the very top. We got a nice hangar bay next to that. Oh, and this helmet is the armor. This is from the Mandalorian. Have you seen Mandalorian? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. So you know that that's the yes. way. Yes, it is. I love this. Fantastic. Get some lightsaber hilts. Oh, here's uh, kind of some old Star Wars-inspired spacecraft. That's interesting, but it's kind of pulling from older Lego themes and using some older pieces. I like that. That's very cool. We're also seeing an, an ISD Chimaria. Chimera? Chimera. That's chi Chimera. That's how you say that. That... I totally didn't get that. That's okay. I have a clone base alpha, which has multiple layers, and then some clones drowning there. That's not great, but that's okay. Ooh, you know? Look. It's realistic. Lots of gray over on the Lego Star Wars Imperial base, based off of uh, some of the, the sequels there. We have the Mos Eisley Cantina set modified a little bit to have some lighting inside of it, along with a couple of sets that you may recognize from the Lego stores. We get over to... The next section, this is from Rogue One. I'm drawing a blank on 
Which Scarif? Scarif, yes. I, and I, I have an encyclopedic knowledge of Star Wars. Good, because your logo is right there. I certainly hope it is. <laughs> That's great. We also have a light cruiser next to the Battle of Scarif. Some troop transports. Oh, look at this adorable baby Yoda cradle here. This looks stunning and uh, perfect match here. Yeah, what a great show. I like the color scheme on this Sunriser here. Then the Defenders of Coruscant. And another pacification build back there. Rebellion Rising. Separatist Hangar Bay. Ooh, look at the uh, like kind of pers force perspective back there. That's really cool. I like that a lot. Yeah, awesome force perspective. Perspective. There's also the the dwarf spider droid, and lots of miniature scenes over toward here, including the Bail Organa speeder, the Halo table, the 774Z speeder bike. We're seeing more Imperials down toward the hallway. Uh, this is this is okay. So this is Jabba's palace. What's going on with Princess oh, Leia right there, man? Oh, no. What are we doing? What what Citizen Bricks nonsense we pulling off here? That's not what Carrie Fisher looked like. Sometimes I think we've gone too far. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Uh, this is the Imperial Troop Transport by Dylan, as well as the Mining Guild TIE Fighter by Dylan. I love the color scheme that's black and yellow on that. We also have the Battle of Utapau, which has multiple battle droids, different layers, and obviously the, the fearsome battle against General Grievous, along with some TIE Fighters, and then the Battlefront 2015 Walker Assault. So this is from the first Battlefront game of the, the revamp that came out from DICE, so that's really cool. I don't, I don't want to upset you, but they just announced there's no Bounce House this evening. There's no Bounce House? How am I supposed to have my vacation juice and get my bounce on? I, somewhere else, out. somewhere else. Where can I bounce, Andres? No, they're taking it down. Oh, I'm really sorry. I didn't know that. Let's continue. What, what can we find? We're not going to spot the differences no, here. That'd and take way too long. I haven't had enough sleep for that. And I haven't had enough vacation juice for that. There's also a sand crawler finishing out this section of Star Wars over here for the most part. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. So then we'll just uh, we'll head the, keep heading this direction here. And as always, as I mentioned earlier in the tour, we do our best to show absolutely everything on display here. This is an absolutely fantastic kind of alien landscape layout here. I love the purple and then this large kind of greenhouse type building. You've got some Mtron inspired ship right there. Uh, I love these great like coral flowers. This looks stunning. I mean, to use this purple in combination with this um, new gray, it looks, it looks good. Very, very nice. It's a uh, bounty hunter ship next to that. Interplanetary cargo ship looks very nice as well. And then the diamond back. Oh, I love the detailing on that. It's got like a little set number on the side. Then a whole bunch of, these are all like the old space police themes. They're kind of inspired by various old Lego themes. But I think this is not an official set here, of course, but it's like of heavily inspired yes. by those old ones here. Blacktron. Yeah, I had it at home. I'm so old. Uh, then a whole bunch of micro ships here as well. And some really cool Lego space art. And then what do we have happening here? This is awesome because uh, you can buy at IKEA some boxes uh, with studs on it. So official Lego license product. And here they use those boxes to create their own worlds. Andres, how do we pronounce that? This is very easy. It's booklet. <laughs> good answer. I would. I, I don't. Okay, good. that's wonderful. We have another display based on some classic space themes. Uh, this is called the Blacktron Outpost. This is by Haas. Wonderful representation of all things Blacktron on multiple layers. The black and yellow color scheme is so fantastic. There it never gets old. Rounding the corner, we've got the. Uh, I can't even pronounce how that. How that's. How that's pronounced. This is by uh, inspired by a Chris Giddens build, though. Shout out to Fazoom. Fazoom, what a great guy. Yes. We also have what looks like a cruise ship of some kind, the Navigator of the Stars. This is Adrian Drake's builds, which we saw. I think they saw these at Brickworld as well, but they're fantastic here. Specifically, this Titanic with the uh, Iceberg Comet here is absolutely amazing. I love this. Adrian's work is, is always fantastic. Next to that, we have the Mountain Climber spaceship and then the Space Shuttle Discovery. Yeah, and we've seen the original one a few days ago. It's five minutes down the road. Exactly, and this is a nice 
scale. I mean, we have seen some Lego versions of it, but in this size, we haven't seen it. So it looks really stunning. S some more space-related stuff. You got a little alien Titan. Uh, then you've got the Aquarius. I love these big spinning cylinders on this as well. Space clowns. This is the ultimate nightmare. Yeah, and this is something we saw at Brick Fair Virginia last year. So making another great appearance here. Love seeing space clowns. This is the work of Blake Foster's super talented builder and just love to see how clean his, his work looks. Really, really nice work. And then he's got some space stuff here as well. That kind of triangular one and then the jackknife gunship. Oh, look at these with the elephant heads. All of these like animal mech things. Poacher assault containment herd. So <laughs> you messed with the mammoths before? <laughs> here again, what's coming to you? Wow. Shout out to Dan Rubin here. Fantastic stuff. Keep moving around to the next section, which is going to be more space here. And we've got this fantastic, massive looking spaceship by Duncan. This is the love letter. And the cargo uh, stack ship, so a whole bunch of cargo containers. Oh, I like I like this one here. This is good, but this is how we store containers in Hamburg, in the, in the harbor. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it looks like when you visit there. Got a little pod build. Uh, this, uh, this ship is super cool. I love the use of those old like tubes to shoot the aliens. Yeah, great micro ship. We've seen this before at Brick River, Virginia. Cool to see this back again. We have a variety of spaceships done by Jonathan Wurst, which is definitely not the worst in any means at all. We have a Tron-inspired build, something out of elves, so great display of creativity across these. Got some like classic space looking mechs there. There's a whole bunch of stuff inspired by old Lego space themes, which I guess makes sense because we're in the space section. This is the hangar bay, a massive uh, mech here. I love to see something that size, all those big fans behind it. Ooh, this is a very like uh, alien planet, moon base type of vibe to it with all these these different areas, you get the blue, the green, the red. Things are changing rapidly. Very colorful, which is allowed, it's Lego. Yes, you're allowed to have multiple colors in Lego? Of course, I do. So we can do whatever you want, but looks, it looks good. Here is uh, Citron, which is another one of those like sets that was never, it was made but never officially released. I was gonna say, I don't recognize Citron, but I love the way they conveyed the box art with the background display there. I think something that a lot more people should do here at Brick World, instead of Brick Fair rather, just having the black tablecloth, gotta spice it up a little bit. And we don't wanna miss uh, one of Kevin Dark's other builds over here. Uh, it was kind of the same situation at Brick World where they put this thing way off on its own and it was very easy to miss, but this build is fantastic. And it's the castle in the sea. There's like interiors inside there. I like his little how it started, how it ended down here. It's it's you versus a guy she tells you not to worry about. Quite literally over here. Yeah, you you don't want to you don't mess with that guy. Yeah, fantastic work. So I wanted to make sure. I think we might have missed this in the Brick World tour because it was so kind of on its own. I wanted to make sure we mentioned that here. It could be beyond the big uh, meme, like you show. This is what others can do, and this is what I can do. You know. Look at you creating content yeah. for us. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. This is a nice collection this here. Is, this of is rockets. based on a book. It says over here from 1994 about if if the U.S. had continued its space program after going to the moon and gone to Mars, what it would have looked like in all the different stages. Yeah. So this is like incredible to build so many of those and to see here how it changed over the, the year, how, how it, how it had, has been involved, it looks good. Yes. Very, very nice. And now we get over to some more spaceships and pirate ships. I, I'm especially loving the different scales. And then this pirate ship is next level. This is called the Duchess's Crow by Ben Wilkins. Excellent work over here by Ben. And that continues over through these multicolor, like International Space Station inspired builds, including uh, multicolors, and different scales all throughout, really taking a futuristic approach to space, which totally makes sense. So, love seeing this here. We're doing our very best, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, everybody at home, to battle against the obnoxiously loud announcements they're doing at 9.30 at night on a Saturday. We are trying our darndest for you, because we know in the Brick World Chicago tour, y'all were like, oh, we can't hear anything. You can hear us loud and clear as we talk about some Brand Blacktron. Brian Soviano, Brian Soviano, please. <laughs> please, 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 please. <laughs> We're here with some Blacktron, more Blacktron, more Blacktron, more Blacktron! Yeah! Look at that old Lego, is that like Lego Universe merch? I don't know. That's what it reminds me of. <laughs> Might as well be, I don't know. Shout out to uh, 
Dean Quest here with this massive Puff 47. That thing looks fantastic. And the Redline Priority Transport, whole bunch of little spaceships here. And then Simon Liu had this fantastic uh, Ape Canaveral. So uh, that is, I think, was in a collab at Brickworld that we have a video up on the channel of. So it's absolutely amazing. Really, really great work there. Uh, then you've got the Palmer Station. You've got a space kind of cargo ship. And then that finishes out this section here with just a classic space layout and some mosaics here as well. Well, we need to keep going over this direction then. And... Uh, to, to, so busy creating content. There's so many layers of content creation happening right now. Yes, because you always have to be on the different layers, just like the different layers of this incredible pirate ship, the, the U.S. pirate ship that is not a pirate oh, ship. You just offended everyone in the country. <laughs> no, it's, it's everyone in Boston. It's stationed in Boston. It's fine. The USS Constitution. They threw tea over this our, thing. Our British fans are happy, though. And they, they can take whatever they want. They can come over to the United States if they got a problem with what I'm saying. Yes, shout out to the USS Constitution uh, with an incredible history there and captured very nicely. Then you've got Isengard here. Nice little Lord of the Rings We're build. We're taking the hobbits there, baby. There we go. To there Isengard. Go. Uh, Valerian Temple. And then a nice little bookstore. I love when people build bookstores and libraries like that with just all the different colored uh, like book covers. It's fantastic. So growing up, Knight's Kingdom 2 was my castle, and it's a castle nobody likes. Same, same. I have so many of those sets. So I'm glad to see that this is like a revamped set, but made modernized and with incredible detail. That is a special place in my heart. And there's something very unique, I have to say. Look at this roof right there, the blue one. It's on awesome. The, on the left over yeah. here. So it's like the, the side, like upside down. Yes. You can't point out build details on the other side of the pole from John because he can't see you. Yeah, this is really, <laughs> you're right, you're right. It's late, it's late. <laughs> <laughs> this castle here we've seen different times at Brick Fair over the years, but it looks fantastic with all the lava and everything. Very large keep in the middle there. Classic castle, uh, remote controlled. Yep, that's the four tracks, just like we've seen from previous years here at Brick Fair, Virginia. There's a nice uh, Herald of Calamity done by Will Hafner. Nice. And we have a Mystic Manor subdivision of Chimera Keep. I said it correctly that time. Oh, very good. I'm learning. Okay. There's also the Siege of Chimera Keep, but done by Benjamin Chavez. Nice job by Ben with the two factions against each other. I like this, uh, this large layout here. This is a modular castle system collaboration. It reminds me of... The one, there was one at Brickworld that was much larger than this, but a similar idea. I want to see a, a building 10 times the size with a bunch of different lugs, not just the uh, South Carolina fans of Lego. I want, I want everyone in on this one. Just all building castle. That's my dream. Yeah. Great ball contraption who? Get some castle up in here. <laughs> we'll go around the corner here. And you can keep checking out some of uh, this, this large uh, spider creature here. In the Tomb of Annihilation, looking very scary. Oh, I love this little uh, attack on Wisman's Wood. Uh, it's got the, the big tree there. Feels very like uh, Legend of Zelda-esque with that build. Yeah, definitely, especially with the giant gilded Leviathan by Joseph Zawada in the back. I love that one. And the Microscale Hyrule Castle. Here's a nice little, uh, the Gilded Axe, which is a nice little inn here. Uh, then you've got puzzle mazes. I love when builders show the statistics on their builds. So 500 hours to build. And this answers a lot of questions for kids that would otherwise ask them all throughout the day. And so many times, uh, creators of all different scales are like, oh, I don't know how much it costs or how long it takes. Give those details if you have them. It adds that much more flavor to explaining what you created. Very good point. Dropping much wisdom here. I'm sorry, I was uh, busy. Um, right here you see a very lovely details inside the castle, which is very special. So not only the, the front, right. but also a lot of life within the castle. We have a whole video on the channel from this, this build last year. <laughs> now this castle I have not seen before. This one caught my attention the other night because all of this stuff was moving. So it's off right now, but there's tons of moving parts in here. And there's just so much detail and action. You see a lot of wizards. Uh, involved in the battle here, Steadfast Keep. I really like this. Shout out to Sean here. Great work. Nice castle scene here as well. Great work on those rounded towers on the outside walls. Very reminiscent of uh, famous architecture like Peach's Castle. We don't talk about Peach's Castle. Not around here. No, no, no. No, no. What do you have Lego Super Mario? 
We can talk later. <laughs> we have more, like, it looks like a ghost ship with some demons. This is nice. And there's a roller coaster. Look, that's how the demons ride around the underworld. It's on a roller coaster. It's great. What a, what a wonderful layout. Now we head back over to the wall here and make sure we don't miss this section. This is a nice little, looks like sort of a maze. Uh, it's the Labyrinth Society. Apparently they're setting up a, uh, a whole labyrinth there. Yeah, which is fun. And here we have the parking area in front of the hall. At Brick Fair. Yeah, I mean, why not? And we're there. You can see us right here. Right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank right. you for pointing that out. Yeah, thank you so much. Got a nice owl build. Uh, this, I love the colors on that build there. And the broken vessel fix using the gold. And finally, more Duplo. It is one Duplo brick right there. Yes, more Duplo, more Duplo. Paintings, this fantastic guardian tower. Now we have come to what might possibly be the best build at the whole convention here by our good friend Micah, who supplies the Mountain Dew for these videos. Yeah, and completely dark ages for me. So I cannot tell anything about it. There's definitely something dark about this, that's for sure. It is, it is, but all those figures, uh, all those these years. Are, uh, I believe like Scala babies yeah. fighting the new tiny baby minifigures. There's like an amphibious landing going on here, large tire tentacles. I didn't know anything about Scala before I have been to Lego, uh, to the Lego Idea House, the museum. I didn't know that can, it exists. Excuse me, can we stop the presses? Can, get the camera on me, John. I would like to sue Micah for copyright infringement on my branding. Can we get a close up on this? Micah chose for his 2x2 two two printed tile to be the Bricks O'Brien logo squished <laughs> from its original state and listed in the yard sale for 10 cents. <laughs> the audacity of this man infringing on my brand and getting even the JPEG pixelated image up on there. 10 cents, Micah? 10 cents. No, these mocks are garbage and I'm gonna sue them into oblivion using your lawyers. You hear that, Jonathan? Your foot in the bill. Your ad revenue is footing the bill for this lawsuit, people. I'm done. If you made it to this part of the video, put tile in the comments. I want to know. All right? I'm after you, Micah. What is going on here? I think I have to go. Is he, is he kind of aggressive right now? <laughs> we'll keep looking at Mr. Stork here with his, uh, his uh, baby mafia next to him there. And then a nice spaceship and some mechs. Uh, then we've got a bunch of like very unique monochrome and clear minifigures here. Yeah, I mean, there are many collectors out there, and I know this is a very cool collection right there. I'm missing quite a few of those. And this is really nice. I mean, the whole Ghostbusters setup, which is, uh, light is lights are missing right now, but it's a really nice setup when you look down through all the details, all the. Um, we have Slimer, we have. Um, Marshmallow Man, we have every... What's his name? Marshmallow Puff? puff. Stay Puffed Marshmallow oh my Man. God. <laughs> we have this white guy. Oh my goodness. I still haven't Please. seen the movie, so Please I don't know. Fine. Please, fine. So, toward the... We have some fish, oh. tropical fish, and then I love seeing the Muppets representation. Swedish Chef, Gonzo going over, some flames as the great Gonzo, and then all the different Muppets from the Muppet Show together on stage as they were many, many years ago, not getting the love that they deserve now but awesome display. We'll come back into the... Uh, actually, we, we, can, we can finish out the, the... We'll just keep going along the edge here and finish this out and then work our way back through. So you've got a little Ninjago City there. You've got um, Revenant like spaceship. And then nice little Star Wars battle here. Some smaller Star Wars ships. The landing. You got a pirate landing going on. This uh, Cornerstone Chapel is absolutely fantastic. Very well done architectural model. It looks like there's a photo of it in front of the real one there. Building the fortress here. So this is some work in progress. You've got the big, uh, what, what, what do you call this guy pulling that? The Rancor. That's for, uh, featured, obviously, in Star Wars and especially in Mandalorian, or rather Bubba's, uh, Bubba's story. Bubba, Bunka Bubba Fett. Oh, no. So late. Bubba, sorry. <laughs> Bubba, sorry. <laughs> That's <laughs> like the Chinese knockoff. <laughs> <laughs> it might as well be Mando's story. All right, so this is a minifigure creation factory. We've seen this in Brick Fair uh, previously, so there have been over uh, 7,400 figures made. Very cool. Oh, I like that little counter. That's cool. Oh, this is really nice. The ETE. 
The newest deep space exploration ship. That's cool. This is Titanic under construction, so in the shipyard, kind of using the Lego set, but creating a nice little scene around it. Yes, yeah, a nice dock in English as well, like dock where yes. the ships, yeah, yes. so it looks great. I mean, this is the way it should be. We've, we found some more of your friends from earlier. Yes, of course, we have another beloved character from Toy Stories. <laughs> <laughs> another, another beloved character. They're, everyone knows their name, so there's no need to say it. This is actually, um, he's only part of the new one. So I think Toy Story 16, Brian? Yes, 16. Yeah, I think, yeah, 16. Yeah, yeah, Toy Story 45, essentially. That's what we're on right now. We're seeing some great construction mocks. Ooh, I like this. This is a very like Tetris vibe. Yeah, Tetris vibes and then like a feast down below, so a construction Thanksgiving meal being had. And then a little castle layout. Ooh, this uh, Junker Town Hanzo is uh, really nice there. There's quite the battle happening here. I think we're getting into some steampunk sections. You can see some big uh, electric bolts being, like lightning bolts being fired out as this base is under assault. Yep, we've seen a lot of these insect-type builds in Brick Fairs previous, so great to see them again here. And a nice uh, exploration ve vessel, and then this big, giant traveling wheel thing. It's crazy. What a great way to use all the curves you have left. So, perfect. Yes, all the train track curves. And then another kind of floating ship. Uh, this is a, a steampunk re color of the, I think, the Le the Lego House exclusive set, isn't it? The injection molding? Yeah, from last year, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice little undersea build there. We've got Car Wars. That's pretty cool. The rowing team. Oh, the ta taxi crab. <laughs> the taxi on top of it. That's how Andres got to the U.S., actually. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he sailed across on one of those. Got the big drone. And, oh, fantastic model here of the Parthenon with a nice little history out in front of it. Shout out to Eli, built this wonderful model. Fantastic place to visit. Then you've got a maxi fig of uh, Marine Corps there. And then a nice little bubble bath build. <clears throat> and then you've got wedding figures, the Dune Ornithopter by Simon Liu. This is the... Uh, uh, dinosaur, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce the name of, done by Kevin Dark. Really fantastic. This tower, I just saw recently, actually. I hadn't even seen it when we were here originally. No, I hadn't seen this one either, especially in this section. This is done by Mike Battles. So this is a multi-story tower. It looks like it has some technic motion to it. Can't wait to see it in motion during show hours. Then Simon has a whole bunch more kind of MC Escher-inspired builds here. They're like puzzles that people can put together. This is, uh, let's see, South Jersey Lug Apartments. Oh, here's the historic Lego section. So some stuff from your childhood. I'm old, but not so old, my good friend, Giorgio Henlon. But we see a lot of nice models here, like very famous ones, like the first Double Decker, Double Decker bus. And also we have the first official Lego space set over there, the blue one. Before we get to that, you can see like a nice windmill, a little police station. Here's the here's the space set. This is the first one ever, the moon landing? Yeah, exactly. So the first official Lego moon landing set. Ooh, look at this old Western stuff. 1975, I don't think I've seen that before. It's like the precursor to the much better Western sets in the 90s. Yeah, I mean, it's all in there. And with the first official Formula One racing car here as well little hospital back there and then you've got the USS uh, Constellation over here which is very nice. So now we will turn our attention back towards the middle of the room and got a, a few a few more sections left a lot of the military stuff for the most part so I know you're getting excited about that. Oh yeah I have to go soon but but this is lovely look at this look at this This, this build is mind-blowing so we have covered versions of this in the past at Brick for Alabama, but this is bigger and better than it's ever been before here. Large collaboration this year with a number of builders involved. We will undoubtedly have, what, an hour-long hour, hour long video on that? You did? <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting to talk to him. No, it is really, really good to see how many details you will find. You can just stand here and look for 20 minutes and you will spot all details. So you have to check out the whole video on your beloved YouTube channel. Yes. What do we have over here, Brian? 
Ninjago City, Ninjago fans coming out in full force, not with just the official sets, but also custom buildings like an Octane Tower, multiple apartments, and really getting the Ninjago vibe. They've done a wonderful job, not just of the entire display with all the minifigures, but then also having a television, the sign, and then some of the other sets on display with lights inside of the shadow box that's toward the front of the display in general. A record table in of itself as well. Uh, this is done by Daniel. Ryan, so do you know what this is right I, here? I, I do know what that is. That's what old people play, like Andreas. Um, I have a record player. And I, 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 just like I said, the old people. And so all of this Ninjago City here in its own corner is great. Kids love Ninjago. Adults love Ninjago as it continues into the next season going into 2023. We'll cover this section and then keep moving more towards the middle. I love this uh, Paca Lego boat delivery here, so it's like all of these ice sections here, kind of trying to survive against whatever's broken out of this base here, kind of an Antarctica vibe. Shout out to our future. <laughs> yeah, that's all I have to say. <laughs> Shout out to the future. <laughs> you got a whole bunch of cool minifigs there. Uh, this is a really neat building. Spirited Away, the Red Gate, in the Studio Ghibli film. I love the tree work there, that's fantastic. Shout out to the Ohio 2023 build here. There's always money in the banana stick up. So this is uh, Banana Man. Uh, it's, it's like all these, these costume characters uh, robbing a bank here, I think, is what's happening. Look what's going on there. Oh, my goodness. That is fantastic. Shout out to Riley on that. I love that build. Uh, then we've got some cars jumping over some trucks there. Helicopters, got the uh, trouble in town, like the slope work here. Very nice. Humvee. And then dirt roads make me nervous. This is uh, Desert Ambush from Sicario. Uh, let's see, this is Operation of the Vigorous Peninsula. This is, uh, it appears to be. World War II battle um, in the Mediterranean. No, just stay away. Stay away. I'm not dealing with you or your so. Wait. You have. Thank you. My favorite. My guy. Can I have? Can I have this? Is yeah, that okay? Yeah, yeah. I, I actually wanted you to drink the energy drink because I didn't. I didn't think Joshua could really handle it. Um, <laughs> so I got Baja for Joshua. I got some energy drink for you because I know you're a gamer and streamer and you really endorse drinking energy drinks all the time. I'm going to sue you for less money for infringing my copyright thank, now. Thank you so much, Micah. Baja's my favorite flavor. Mm. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is what we needed to finish out the tour. Hey. Cheers. <laughs> so back, back to these builds here. So that... It's fantastic, like Mediterranean World War II builds, and then a whole bunch of smaller World War II vignettes, uh, like tanks and stuff all along here. You're going to be hearing World War II and military a whole lot coming up. But before we get to that, we've got Tanker Bell. Uh, here, what, what do you think of this tank? Yeah, so I'm here to talk with you about all those builds. This is a tank, and I can talk about the colors. It's colorful, yeah, yes, of course. Yes. Here's like a cool ambush build. I love the explosion effect there. Then we've got the Battle of the Bulge. Oh, some fantastic fighter jets. We've got a MiG, Hornet, and then a nice uh, helicopter build here. Some more fighter jets as well. So you see such a fantastic variety of builds on display here. So that we've got, uh, this is a World War II Japanese build, and then some like North African German looking builds. Landing on Saipan here. Fantastic work. I've actually uh, been to the island of Saipan and snorkeled out to some of the tanks there from the, the battle that took place there. Very fascinating stuff. I'm sure it's incredibly fascinating. Do you want me to, do you want me to cover this, this uh, uh, giant Duplo yes. ship while you, while you take a sip of your yes, Baja you. Blast here? You're incredibly welcome here. This is the HMIS Marquis. This is done by Elias. And this almost looks Duplo-esque in its blockiness, but it's incredible that there's the red black and using the grade elements that are not quite pristine using those aged elements into its favor no problem at all next up is a laundry mat with a tree falling through it so a post-apocalyptic build abandoned in time this is done by luke awesome job here 
Just going to grab another look at a section that I know uh, is over toward this way. We're going to let Joshua handle the military builds as he takes a sip of this Baja. Oh, wait, uh, Andres. Now it's my turn. We have, okay. we have trains. Now we take our time because we have trains. Are you, are you Look a train at, guy? Of course I am. You're a train guy? Yeah, of course I'm. Talk about I love trains. trains. I'm in Europe. We love trains. Look at those trains. Just relax. Oh, all those nice colors. Andres, can we get, can we get oh, some, can look we at get this. Some, can we get look some, at this. Can we get some train ASMR, please? <laughs> Let's get some train ASMR as we look at this train layout here. Check a check a ooh ooh. Check a check a ooh ooh. All sorts of trains. We'll never do two together again. Yeah. <laughs> look at John. He thinks, what have I done? Well, Kirk is going to be 21 next year, so he won't get kicked out. So it's fine. He's at Dave and Buster's right now, so we're just going with this. I love these buildings adding some depth toward the middle, and especially what looks almost like an X between these two buildings, almost modular inspired, the dark red and white accents. Real, I don't know if that's even architecturally possible, but we're rolling with it. Hey, with enough imagination, anything's possible. Absolutely. The train theme continues all the way through here. Some have motion, some do not. And we're heading toward a train yard, which this one is just for the sake of displaying all the different types of train cars. And Virginia is known not just for um, the, the cities that are a part of each of the lugs, but also the trains that accompany them. So you're seeing them in full force, many figures, multiple uh, types of steam engines and coal cars. And we have some nominated for best train toward the very front here. This is on the cusp of the military section. So it's very fitting that there's some of these real life uh, vehicles to accompany everything that's military above and beyond what it should be. So. Oh, I like this. This little section right here is uh, is very nice as well. So you've got all the old timey kind of smaller trains and stuff. How bale and hay, very nice. Southern Pacific, got some more kind of trains just on display. The big train barn there, using tons of like little plate pieces. I love the red and yellow John Deere look on that one as well. We got some Ninja Turtles in there. Oh, we do. Wow. Where? Oh, they're in the pool <laughs> with the aliens. That's where they should be. <laughs> Exactly. But well, look at these little like flowering bushes as well. That's fantastic. Even more trains. All I can see right now, trains. So many lovely trains. And all those different colors, steam engine here. Look at this. Oh my, I love trains. Look at this. Oh, we see more trains here. They're blue, they're red, they're brown, they're white. I love trains. Look at all those trains. What about the beautiful little lambs as well? And then some great trees. And I think that finishes this section out. Now we start on two or three large sections of military. And you've got a... Oh, man. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> oh, damn it. Oh, my <laughs> Unfortunately, right, 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 as, right as we were about to launch into the military section, we lost a couple of the contributors, unfortunately. But we'll go ahead and launch it in here anyway. So starting off with a fantastic build from Caden Burton, who has been featured many times over the years on Beyond the Break. This is the Battle of Okinawa. He's got all this history out in front of it, so he's moved on from Peleliu, which he did for a number of years, and now has this fantastic Okinawa landing here with all of the... U.S. Uh, Marines landing on shore. It's just excellent, excellent work here. Always love to see what Caden brings out to Brick Fair every year. Here's the clouds above. Uh, it looks like this is maybe like some zombie stuff going on. It's not ending well for people here. No, definitely not. That continues over toward another nominee build. This is a nominee for the biggest and bestest, Ooh. the Bridge of Rem... Ramagan. Ramagan, there we go. That's why that's why this all works out. From March 7th, 1945. Love the bridge, multiple, multiple archways, and then making use of those discolored bricks, just like in a couple other creations we've seen here today. Lovely seeing this. Yes. Very famous bridge battle in the final months of World War II as the Americans were breaking through into Germany. Then you see just a ton of different tanks and armored vehicles on display here. Uh, then you've got this fantastic build uh, from 1940 of the uh, German invasion of France. Really great architectural work. These next couple builds we're going to see around here are actually based on the Finnish-Soviet war uh, that was going on during World War II. And this is done by Eric Larson and his son. Fantastic where you see a, a Finnish armored train back there. 
Uh, that's the kind of the Corellia build, and then over here is the uh, um, Mannerheim line as well. So this is fantastic. All, all snow based. You don't see a lot of snow based builds like this. I love to see a lot of white. No, yeah, you definitely don't see that around here, and I can appreciate more winter things because uh, we've seen the spooky, but not as many like Christmas or holiday themed builds here, like by comparison of what we saw in Chicago just a few months ago. Then we've got a uh, unique material here. So this is actually from 1918 at the end of World War One. This is some uh, French reinforcements going to the Western Front. So not a battle. You get a beautiful little church there. You see some kind of like trenches represented, but I like the uh, different take on a typical like World War One, World War Two build there. Some more planes and tanks. And we'll jump ahead here to the Battle of Ortona in 1943. And really beautiful, like, background there. This is the Braycourt Manor assault in 1944. Some fantastic planes. Nominated for best aircraft for that Corsair there. You can uh, see planes just like that a few minutes down the road at the Udvar Hazy Center, fantastic air and space museum. Going a little more modern with the Golan Heights and the battle between Syria and Israel. Uh, then we've got what, whatever this is. <laughs> Don't mess with the money in the banana stand. You know, <laughs> police raid on the bananas. A lot, of, uh, a lot of violent bananas in these builds. I mean, that might be the theme of Brick Fair next year. <laughs> uh, then some more fantastic armor. You got Killdozer. I don't know if they, is that based on something. Um, I think that, yes, that actually is. Somebody made that in their farm and then terrorized a town by having the, the ki that's like a real thing. Wait, like a real life thing? Yes, yeah, that actually happened. Some guy made that in a barn and then like ran over a town because he was mad about it. That's why it says if you know, you know. Wow. Okay. I yeah, I'm I'm not kidding. I'm like 100% serious. <laughs> well, that's crazy. And we got to move on to the next military section now after that story. That is quite traumatizing. This se this section here, fortunately, fortunately our German contributor joined us just in time. So tell us a little I'm about this town. Okay, I'm back to early. This is Aachen. Um, it's a nice town in, the, in West Germany, near the border of the Netherlands. And this is Aachen of 44. <laughs> so, yes. different times. Now, what's so interesting, though, about this is the builders actually represented some of the buildings that are there in the town today. So, they did an incredible amount of research to capture a lot of that architecture there. Just imagine this whole setup, this whole layout, without tanks, 2022. This would be... Fine. That's <laughs> boring. Yeah, for you, yeah. yeah. So, but nothing against the, the builder. I mean, it's a lot of research here and, uh, yeah, it, it, is, it is good looking. I mean, but you know what I mean. It's, what, is, yeah. what is the blue building there? I haven't been there. I haven't been there. Oh, it says it. It says it on there. It's meat. Okay, that's a German word. Yeah. Okay. I thought you'd be able to read German. Yeah, yeah. I, I can. I can from time to time. This is here, beer. <laughs> and this, of course, Aachen. <laughs> Great work. Is it, there's a, uh, may I share a nice story while we walk on in very, very fast well, way? First, got to give oh, a shout-out okay. to but, Big but, Planes but, but, here. But, yeah, I have to share my story okay. because very, very good. Aachen should have gave up like 1A, and they did not. So they're always in front when it comes to all cities of Germany. Oh. So this is why there's a double A, oh. Aachen, you know? And they listed alphabetically yeah, their yeah, first. Yeah. So they no, 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 we will keep both A's, you know? <laughs> this is fun, yeah. I love it. Fun yeah, fact, yeah. fun fact. Shout out to Jack from Big Planes for this fantastic B-52 model here. We'll have a whole video on the channel on that as well. We got a whole bunch more tanks, some fantastic military planes. Yo, we grilling up in here, John. Look, look at this grill. Get, keep hand up for a hot minute then. We got some grilling action going on. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. My, my man. They, they, yo, we're famous. Can you hook us up? Gentlemen, there's literally hot dogs and hamburgers and we're starving. We have a million subscribers. Can we get a burger? <laughs> Keep going. Yeah, give me a hot dog. Give me a hot dog. I got it right here. <laughs> I was just saying I want a hot dog. <laughs> Hook a brother up with a hot dog. Give me a hot dog. I'm not. I'm not playing. I'll give you. A, I'll give you two. I got a dollar. Hold up. Hold up. Can I take a dollar? Is a dollar okay? We have, we have change. See what you need. All right. Wait, wait, hold on, no, wait. This is like a whole deal going on. Wait, hold on, no, I got two bucks, I got two bucks. Yeah, man. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, thank you. Special 
That's how we do it here at Beyond the Brick. You're getting billed for that one, John. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I have no idea what is happening here now. We're going to keep going through these builds. This is uh, DNBN Fu, which is uh, from the, uh, Vien the French fall in Vietnam right there. Then a whole bunch of uh, mil military jets and planes here. And some more, some more fantastic jets. Keep it moving so through loud. the section. We should go on. So many people are talking. John, we should just move on. <laughs> Keep going here. Uh, fantastic. So here's another. Uh, this is another Pacific landing in World War II right there. Hey, yo, real quick, hot dog update. This thing's fire, my guy. Is, is it really good? <laughs> it's really good. Oh, my goodness. They know how to cook, these military guys. <laughs> they can cook up some good mocks and good dogs. <laughs> that's amazing. I thought it was going to be like garbage. Mm -mm. Wow, that's fantastic. All these armored vehicles here, and then some more jets. I feel like I've said that a lot here, but there's just a ton of fantastic stuff on display. And now we have this fantastic uh, G.I. Joe layout. So we've featured some iterations of this. It's not? I thought so some of it was. Okay, here's the builder. Can you what, what is happening here? Yeah, so two thirds of it is GI Joe. Uh, the other is so it's it's all the modular display. You've seen it years in the past. Okay. But we were like, yo, what if we hang a bunch of planes off a bunch of metal that's usually used for drum sets, because that carries a lot of weight, right? So let's hang some Lego airplanes. Um, so we just essentially built a big runway for all the uh, all the airplanes and helicopters and vehicles and stuff. So we're like, what if we mix modern military with GI Joe and complete and absolute nonsense and you get eight full tables of like 12 years worth of building a Lego diorama battlefield. Fantastic. So. Thank you for correcting me. It's no fantastic. Problem. We're here. We're here. We're helping each other out. It's fantastic. <laughs> Keep up the good work. <laughs> we're going to come around the corner and we're going to see if we can. Uh, right now, I feel like this, this video has become that train we saw earlier going into the water. <laughs> we're doing hot dog deals and military yeah. builds, baby. This is a G is it wait th so so this part I think it's GI Joe they kind of like combine different sections up but this is all GI Joe oh, that sounds like it's his fault for combining it with the historical accuracy here it's a little it's a little suspicious but we shout out to Magnus who has done tons of incredible GI Joe stuff over the years we featured some of that in videos really really great work uh, then we've got this a uh, bunch of GI Joe vehicles and. Some of some of oh look at this sweet uh, like brick separator little fort thing there. Making good use of that. I, excellent work. Uh, hey, we have a whole blimp. Look at there's actual balloons holding this thing up. I was I thought they were getting the weather readings in here, but no, it's just actual big balloons, and it's holding up this entire thing here. It looks like a display for a bunch of different advertise. Where's it be on the brick advertisement? You got Spalding on there. Where's John? John, where's the ad money? We, we needed to buy ad space on the blimp. You really, you really got it next year. The hot dog money can go to the blimps instead. I <laughs> yes. uh, love this uh, the seed vault in there as well. Beautiful tank. Uh, look, look, the collapsing bridge is a tour video. Don't worry, I'm flashed. I got this. This is a this is a world in darkness collab right here. And uh, let me tell you, this is gas. Uh, we have a bridge in the middle. We have a big. I, I'm trying to not curse, but. We have a lot of we have a lot of stuff going on in the build, you know, gas, right? That's all you want. Thank you for keeping it family friendly. That's all you want is for the build to be like dope, and that's what it is. Perfect. Keep up the good work. Then you have a World War One trench scene all along here. And so, oh, yeah. My man, that hot dog was straight fire, my man. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, very positive reviews. Yeah. <laughs> There's some more planes, and then some. French resistance and like a D-Day build there. And then we are World War II and I think we have finally <laughs> finished this section out. That was that was a tough one. Round of applause in the chat. <laughs> Round of applause. We did it, boys and girls. We're on. I don't know if you can get a tank emoji on YouTube, but if you can, leave one if you've made it through that <laughs> section. <laughs> now we have come to a much more peaceful section. Oh, here we go. And I'm back on track. We have lovely setting here. Like a f kind of future city, like alien planet, but it looks good. I mean, it's all the the lighting here, which is interesting, and with this colorful area here also, which is yeah, which is good to look at. Yeah, all of these different like modules here all connected up, so everybody kind of has their own little habitat, all living together peacefully. Again, just in peace, love and peace, as I always tell you. This looks good. I mean, all those colors. I mean, it's. 
it's lovely. And we have this old Lego Paradisa elements there, the printed palm, for example. Oh, very nice, very, very nice. Next, oh, a large and, black and, pyramid. And if my sister wants to ask her where all her old Lego Paradisa is, uh, I don't know where it is. Maybe it's somewhere, you know. <laughs> now we move on to my favorite mock of Brickfair, Virginia, the Pepsi bottle next to the X-Wing. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to Pepsi bottle. Oh, man. This is uh, Delaware Valley Lego Users Group has this great whole space layout here. So it's kind of like a moon based module type idea and then train tracks running all around it. Very, very nice. You got like a little Godzilla. And with the new Lego set, which is out there, the new Lightyear oh, set. Yes. I haven't seen it yet. It's on Disney Plus, though, right? Exactly, or in a cinema nearby you. <laughs> uh, classic space inspired build here. Here's a. <laughs> Walmart shopping cart. Like, come on, come on, Brian. I can see it in your eyes. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I can't. I can't. I can't get in here. I can't. Go, 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 go. I can't. This is not. This is a fun bit. Please go. This is a fun bit. I can't do it. Get in there. No. Take a chair. Get inside. Come on. I will get. Come on. Do it. Do it. Go. 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 Here we go. <laughs> now it's fun. Okay, we go on. All right. What's next? What's next? <laughs> I, think, I think we're almost done. I think it's this direction. All right. Oh, here we go. Are we go in this direction. It's not going to end well. I think it's only that section over there left, and then we're done. Oh, that actually looks pretty comfortable there. Well, how does it feel? I feel alive. And it's not because I hurt myself getting in here. It's because I feel like a child, and it's an experience I didn't get to have as a kid. And I appreciate Andres for encouraging me to go outside of my comfort zone. Brian, and feel I told you no more Lego today. Mommy is here because we have to buy food. <laughs> so, uh, I apologize if you made it this far. I want the Super Mario. <laughs> okay, so I think this is the last section we have here. This is a uh, Lego Island 25th anniversary. <laughs> Shout out to fantastic Lego computer game here. A lot of my childhood spent in there. Mama, Papa there, uh, Bricolinis represented in the house. Then we've got these uh, micro-scale little modular buildings. I want to put them in my shopping cart and go <laughs> check out. Which is fun. I mean, the new set is still under construction, the hotel on the left. And you see, like, the original five sets, which was an official set. And you see all the nice new modular buildings in this micro-scale as well. Do you think when we look at the analytics on this video, there's just going to be a dramatic drop <laughs> in this section? There's going to be a big spike up. <laughs> we have uh, some nominations for best micro builds over here. Uh, some from uh, getting some Charm City Lug awards. And then there are actually vignettes in their own display cases, which is incredibly cool, all combined together across different themes and branches, which is excellent. I think there's like a vignette swap thing or something that happens here. Yeah, and I actually saw that happen the other day. So if you're at Brick Fair, Virginia, make your own little vignette and swap it with something else and get something unique for your collection. And then some fantastic habitats all along here. Tons of characters. Which ones stand out to you? They look all good together, but I have to say uh, the one there with the, oh, um, easel. I don't know the word right now because it's really late. The, the blue one there, what's the name of this beloved animal? Your? There, yeah. From, from Winnie the Pooh? Yeah, 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 Eeyore. Yeah, Eeyore, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, I think the last section we have is actually these houses up front here. I think we've done everything else. Is, is there anything we miss? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where I am. I think we've done it, so let's, let's move that direction. I think that'll finish it out for us. There we go, there we go. Look it. I mean, he, he, this is perfect mode of transportation. Yeah, I mean, Brian is a good friend of mine, and if you cannot walk anymore, <laughs> let's do it this way. Shut I've always wanted to be pushed in a shopping carriage by a large eccentric German man. I asked you twice before, before we left the house. Do you have to pee? I asked you twice. No, we don't go to the toilet right now. Is that not, is that not yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Trust me, it's not new. It's, it's, this is what fuels greatness right here. Yeah. Yes, sir. Shout out to the Brick Mania booth here and some fantastic work they're doing at Brick Fair. You see their ad at the beginning of every video. It's fine. <laughs> Uh, so I believe this is actually the last of what we have not done here at the show. These are three very large, fantastically done uh, buildings. So this is the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy Wiley Hall building, this big white one here. And then as we come around to the pink building, 
Let's see what this is. I love the big turret on the side. This is the Pink Lady, uh, which is in Eureka, California. You can see a photo of the real building there. And then we have the Biddle Mansion here from Riverton, New Jersey. So I believe that does finish out the tour for us here. I think we've covered absolutely everything. Yeah, I just want to add, I don't get anything from Bubble, which a nice drink is. Uh, nothing. They, they don't pay me anything, but it's lovely. It's a good drink. It's well, sparkling water. It's a good one. <laughs> Look at We're going to let Kirk know that the quality of the stream took a dramatic dip once he was kicked out. If you made it all the way to the end of this video right here, can I get some shopping cart emojis down in the YouTube comments, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in, listening, watching to all the nonsense here at Brick Fair, Virginia, 2020, 22, 2020, 22. We're going to see you for more tour videos in the near future. Bye! Bye!